Woot. Woot. So we should be live here as soon as you two says it in the corner. It Yellow. In the corner. It says we're broadcasting and yep. Okay. Live. We appear to be on. We are live. Yay. We're doing it live. Uh, good evening. <laughs> uh, good evening and, and welcome uh, to the 2018 Mountaineer Kings of War GT first round pairing announcements and uh, predictions. Uh, I am not the tournament organizer. Uh, my name is Mike Adkins, and I'm your, your host for this little broadcast. Uh, the tournament organizer is Chris Fisher, but he's, uh, he's very busy uh, getting all the last minute details of the, uh, of the tournament squared away. So he didn't have time to do one of these, but uh, you know, they're, they're fun things to do. So he wanted to make sure that people had something to watch uh, to help build a little excitement and, uh, and uh, look forward to their, their first round uh, matchups with a little bit of anticipation, uh, a little bit of friendly, friendly uh, competition here. Um, so uh, before we get started, uh, I want to remind everyone that this is purely for entertainment purposes. Um, we're all friends of the Kings of War community. That's like the best thing about the community. Uh, so uh, everything that we say is purely meant to be taken in a tongue in cheek uh, manner for entertainment purposes only. Um, and uh, so, so the way this is going to work is we have some panelists. Uh, I'm going to go through and announce uh, who's playing against who on what table. I'm going to read the lists that they submitted uh, to Chris. Uh, then after I'm done reading the list, the panelists will uh, discuss the, the lists and how they think they fare against one another and how they think they'll fare in the scenario for the first round, which I do have. And I, I will announce that here in a moment. Uh, and then they're, they're going to make a prediction of who they think is going to win. And I'm going to jot them down. And then, uh, and then when we're done, we can see uh, after the first round, we can see who, who got the most right uh, or who was the furthest off in most of the prediction. So uh, if you're attending the Mountaineer GT, uh, hopefully you're, you're watching. Uh, hopefully you'll like what the panelists have to say, even if they don't think you're going to win. Maybe you can, can glean some little bit of insight or strategy and what you should do uh, differently than what they expect. Um, other than that, let's just, uh, let's just have a good time and, uh, and have fun talking about uh, our favorite game here. Uh, so first up, I'd like to introduce our panelists. Uh, I'm announcing them in the order that YouTube is showing them to me here. Uh, so first up, uh, we have uh, the guy who's currently first place uh, in the Mid-Atlantic, uh, which is not Master Alex Chavez, but Ray Shields. Hi, I'm Ray, Hi, Ray. Shields. Um, I'm looking forward to coming down and playing at Mountaineer. Mountaineer is my first two-game GT last year, and looking forward to doing a bit better than what I did last year this year. Excellent. Welcome. And uh, next up, uh, we have Felix Castro representing the Midwest. Hi, Felix. Hey, uh, glad to be here. Like I said, I'm the token Midwest player for this hangout. Um, it's been my first time in Mountaineer. Um, not my first Mid-Atlantic GT, but uh, looking forward to Mountaineer. A lot of great things about it. And so when Andrew Summers, whose name we mentioned later on the cast, suggested we all go, we, we all was like, heck yeah, let's do it. So looking forward to it. Yeah, we have uh, we, we have contingents from a few different regions coming to Mountaineer this year, uh, which is is great. I love seeing the the cross region uh, rivalries picking up. It adds a little bit extra, a little bit extra spice, a little bit extra bragging rights to the games, and brings a little bit of different meta. Um, next up, we have uh, the uh, Mid Atlantic uh, style icon, uh, Joey Greek. Uh, hi, I'm Joey Greek. You've probably seen me on Facebook, or at least talking shit somewhere. That's normally what I do. Uh, so I'm really just here to talk shit at Felix the whole time because mm. uh, I challenge him and that's really my job. So it's, all you get to look forward to is what can a Nurgle Legion kill? That's about all I got. Awesome. Uh, and lastly, we have uh, representing the Southeast region, uh, TO for the Siege of Augusta, Robert Brandon. Hey, good to be here. Looking forward to the event this weekend. Are you still going to be TOing Siege of Augusta? That is right. It'll be uh, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend in 2019. We had uh, 58 last year, so a lot of that was with Mid-Atlantic support. So hopefully we'll get those folks down again and have a good time. Excellent. Yeah, it was a great time. Um, we are supposed to be joined uh, by minor internet celebrity Jesse Cornwell, uh, but he's not here at the moment. He's a he's MIA. Hopefully he's okay, and he's just a little late. Celebrity business. Yeah, my very he's he is kind of a big deal. Who knows what what sort of emergency he may have been called away on? Uh, somebody may have flashed the the Jesse signal somewhere in the mountains of West Virginia. We don't know. Um, 
so hopefully he'll 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 join us at some point. Uh, and if not, then somebody else will just have to get out some action figures to smash together when we get to the appropriate matchups, um, as one does. So uh, with that, uh, we'll start going through the first round pairings. Uh, so at this time, I'm happy to say that Chris has selected pillage as the scenario for the first round. Sorry, Joey. <laughs> Um, I got Felix, not you this time. Yeah, that's right. true. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, so, so there we go. You, you you can keep in mind that pillage is going to be the scenario. Uh, as far as I know, uh, Chris isn't going to have people roll randomly. He's probably just going to say set up seven tokens, or maybe he's going to tell us to roll. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. This, so so this will be a a hold 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 as many objectives as possible at, at the end of the game scenario. Uh, and we are doing blackjack scoring for the event. Uh, so you can keep that in mind. If, if you think that might change people's strategy and how they might play their list a little bit, thinking about that they have to hold a lot of objectives and not just one more than the other guy. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, and now I'm gonna pop over and announce the first match. So on table one, we have uh, Master Alex Chavez versus Steve Malone. And I and no, I'm never gonna get tired of saying Master Alex Chavez. Every opportunity I have to introduce him that way, I'm totally gonna introduce him that way for the rest of the year. <laughs> the and then next year I'll call him former time. Master Alex Chavez. That's right. You, heard you, you, you salute when El Presidente goes by. That's how it works. So um, <laughs> since Alex uh, is basically just having fun at tournaments at this point, uh, he actually put up a poll to ask which which army he should play. Uh, and had us vote on it, so he selected Kingdoms of Men for him. Uh, so he has put together a Kingdoms of Men list, uh, and, and it goes a little something like this. So he has three hordes of Shield Wall. He has two regiments of Berserkers. He has two hordes of Bowmen. He has three Siege Artilleries. He has three Generals on Winged Beasts, uh, one with the Pipes of Terror, one with the Blade of Slashing, and one with the Mace of Crushing. Uh, he has two heroes. One is mounted on a flying Pegasus, and one is mounted on a horse. And then he has an army standard bearer with the Loot of Insatiable Darkness. That is Alex's list. And he is going up against uh, Steve Malone, who is playing Twilight King. His Twilight Kin list is uh, two regiments of Dark Knights, three hordes of Dark Side Chariots, three Hydras, a uh, Dark Lord on a Black Dragon with the Chalice of Wrath, a High Priestess with Bane Chant, two Army Standard Bearers, and Bazuzu the Vile. And that is his list. All right, guys, who wants to go first? I'll take first go if you would, Mike. Um, while I have the utmost respect for the master, I do think he's in trouble with this matchup. Uh, Steve can outrange him. He uh, shoots better. He has better movement. He has the ability to declare the charges at his will. The master's going to have to use all his skill and cunning to place the tokens. But I think in the end, the speed and more importantly, the viciousness of the uh, pin will come through. Right. Especially on that low or defense of the Kings of Man. A couple, you know, especially those Berserkers with the defense three. Vicious is just nasty against that. Having gone up against Steve Malone with defense three armies, they, they just melt to Vicious. It's, yeah. When Plus I play the, Rackin against Kin, I know that every hit becomes a wound because you, you might as well convert it that way. Yeah, pretty much is a good way to eyeball it. And then, you know, the Siege Artillery, that's one of those things. That's 270 points. It's either going to do really well or miss every time. If it hits, it's going to do damage. But, yeah, I can't really bank on that, unfortunately. All right, so that's two for Steve. Joey, what do you think? I'm voting Alex on this, mostly because it's Alex and he rolls like Alex, and that means the Siege Artillery is going to take a Chariot Horde off turn one. And then from that one, Alex wins. And that's normally how Alex is going to roll that. <laughs> Otherwise, 
Steven's just probably going to take off three hordes by the end of turn four and probably can win off of that. But it's going to depend on if Steven keeps his three chariot hordes alive. If he doesn't, Alex should probably win pretty easily on unit strength. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm with Joey. I think Alex is going to win this. Um, you know, chariots, I'm expecting some decent amount of terrain out there to, to mitigate some of that shooting. And chariots don't hit that hard coming through terrain. Alex can get out, or I'm sorry, uh, Steve can get out and pick his matchups, but I think there's enough unit strength in the army that on this scenario, Alex will win. Yeah. Alex has four flying unit strength, which is going to be really annoying on pillage. This, right. I mean, that list is made for pillage. Yeah. Right. But if he's able, Steve's able to contain those flyers. I mean, for me, that's kind of the key to the matchup. If he's able to contain the flyers and not allow them to kind of, you know, do stuff. And don't forget, and, he's and got. The bulk, the bulk of Steve's unit strength is in those chariots, and that nerve is not there. If those, you know, two right. rocks, one, one return with two rocks, that's the end of a chariot. Right. But also, don't forget, he also has Basusu, who can all, also always do Basusu things. Good old Basusu. Much yeah. might. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think this is a good matchup for Alex. Um, I, I don't think it's a good matchup for the master, but I, I do have to commend him for taking Kingdoms of Men. It's not something we see in the Mid Atlantic. It's it's not considered to be a powerful list that goes. Right. And I think so outside of the, the elves, we haven't seen anything we see in the Mid Atlantic. <laughs> oh, my it's like normal stuff. True. All right, so we're split two and two in the first uh, the first matchup. Two for uh, two for Alex and uh, two for Steve. So uh, with that, I'll move on to table two. Table two is going to be uh, Andrew Summers versus Mike Austin. So I think this is another uh, what mid Midwest versus uh, Mid Atlantic challenge. Golden Sweater challenge. All five of them. Golden sweater. That's right. The first five. The first five tables are all part of the the cross region challenge, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, so Andrew is uh, bringing Brotherhood. He has uh, he has a regiment of villain martyrs with the war bow. He's got two hordes of water elementals. Uh, he's got the Order of Redemption. Uh, that's the that's the one that regenerates for those of you that don't play Brotherhood um, with uh, potion the caterpillar. He's got a troop of villain reconnoiterers. Uh, he has a horde of the Order of Forsaken with the Brew of Strength. Those are the ones that fly. He's got two Forsaken Beasts, both kitted out the same way. They've got Breath Attack 10, Ensnare, and Regenerate 5. It's a really solid build for the Beasts. Uh, he's got an Exemplar Redeemer with the Blade of Slashing. He's got two Devoted. Both of them have Martyr's Prayer. And one of them is mounted on a horse. Uh, and he has an exemplar for Saker, which is the, the flying hero, uh, who has healing brew. It's a pretty solid brotherhood list. Uh, and then Mike Austin is bringing elves. Uh, this, uh, this list is going to sound very familiar by the time we get about halfway through the cast. Uh, so uh, Mike's elf list is a, a horde of kindred archers with the heart seeking chant, elf standard. Uh, two regiments of palace guards, uh, a horde of kindred tall spears, so you know what's coming, uh, with a hammer of measured force. He's got two hordes of dracon riders, one with fire oil and one with caterpillar potion. He's got two dragon breaths. He's got an army standard, mounted on a horse with a diadem and dragon kind. He's got two noble war chariots, uh, the master hunter with uh, the inspiring talisman. And of course he has the green lady, and the honor guard of the Green Lady formation, which gives uh, those uh, infantry units uh, region. All right. What do you guys think? Same order as before, right? Get it started. Okay. Um, I like that Mike went with a bit less shooting and is trying out the formation of the Green Lady. Uh, I think it will cause him. Uh, play a bit differently and a bit more aggressively with the elves, which is uh, will be a, a welcome change for those people. Hi, I'm feeling. <laughs> Do you want to interrupt to say hello or? No, not yet. Just uh, let you do your analysis. So uh, I, 
I, I like Mike's formation. I like his aggressive style that he's going to be with this list. I think he has the shooting capability that will be underestimated with the two Dragon's Breath and the Kindred uh, Archers. Uh, so that's what I really like about Mike's list. Um, with uh, Andrew's list, um, it looks really good. The thing that I don't necessarily understand in it is the water elementals. And I, I don't know how that plays into this list because there's no surge to take advantage of them. Um, I like the Forsaken Beast with Ensnare and Regenerate and combined with 14 Angel points of Martyr Summer? Prayer. They're going to be sticking around for a long time. Angel Summer? <laughs> so Andrew Summer is a good player because if, if he is, then the question will be how many shots of vodka does Mike have that morning? Right. So. If you obviously the water elementals, if you look at the general theme of Andrew's list, is the regen. Yes. There's just tons of regen in that it's, list. It's still 14 inch range. Like they don't need to double. They can go yeah. seven. And that's a decent mobile anchor type unit if he really needs to. So I mean, yeah. you you totally agree? Is that what it is? Okay. Now <laughs> I will before I throw my vote in, I'm going to be completely and utterly upfront with you. But Andrew is my ride to Mountain <laughs> So who do you think Andrew's gonna win? Who do you think is gonna win? Andrew. There we go. What do you think about it? What do you think about this list? It's great. Yeah, it's a really good list, yeah. Yeah. Is it everything you wanted in a Brotherhood list? Yeah. Do you know what the Brotherhood is? No. No, you don't know what the Brotherhood is. <laughs> All right, cool. Not yeah, so nice. There should be more nice. Hi to the, hey, how do YouTube, everybody? Hi. <laughs> All right. Get to my buddy. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> So were you going with uh, were, were you going with Mike, right? I, I'm going to go with Mike. Right. I have the utmost faith in my club mate. Uh, he is going to be in shape and good to go Saturday morning. After lunch, we're not so sure about, but by <laughs> for, for Saturday morning, he should be fine. Uh, game one, right. he is ace. He is ace in game, game one. Game two is question mark. So that's that's one for Mike and one for Andrew. Uh, what do you think, Joey? Um, I think Mike probably tuned this list because he knew he was playing Brotherhood. Um, I hadn't seen him run this Tall Spear Horde before this. I don't know if he ran it unplugged. I didn't see his unplugged list. But uh, this is a pretty nifty pick when you happen to challenge the Brotherhood player in the U.S. A uh, little bit fishy there. But um, I think he's got a lot of the right tools. Um, the real question is going to be if Andrew Summers is going to roll a bunch of sixes on turn six and take his shirt off. Just like he did at Masters. Because that's really... <laughs> what this bench match is all about. Uh, I think Mike should win on Pillage. He's got enough stability with the Green Lady to block off a Night Charge if he wants it. Um, without the Surge and the Water Elements, Green Lady can do a lot of work there too. So I think he's got enough chaff and he's got enough shooting to take advantage of the lower nerves that the Brotherhood is bringing. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with that. I think I think Mike's going to win this. I won't say easily, but it should be a, it should be a win for Mike. He's got a lot of tools there. I mean, the Tall Spears are something I wanted to talk about a little bit. Um, he's got some chaff to break up charges in those Noble Chariots. I, I think he has what he needs to win this uh, on in Pillage. So I'll go with Mike, too. Okay. And he didn't yeah, bring have... Robert's brother list, so obviously it's worse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> obviously well, inferior. I have seen Mike play this this list, uh, so so I do have a sense of, of uh, kind of what he does with it. And he played it against. Uh, I watched him play it not against the Brotherhood list, but against a uh, fairly cab heavy um, Basilean list, um, built kind of similarly to to this this Brotherhood list. Uh, and he just picked it apart. Like the you 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 have to send your cab against like the infantry uh, because the, the Dracons will just outrun you and hit you anyway. So like they're, they're not a good target and the chariots will steer you away from it. So you, so you, you try to run into the spears, you get nowhere and then the green lady heals them and then you get flanked by Dracons. So like you just don't really have any good options as a cab list. Um, he's he, he's going to have to really rely on his like flying character. Like Andrew's really got a lot of his flying character and like the, the flying uh, like Pegasus Knights or whatever they are to like smack some Dracons and like open up a flank so he gets some room to work. Uh, otherwise, he's just going to be, you know, damned if he goes in, damned if he stands back. Um, Andrew really needs a brew of haste in those fakers in this matchup in particular. Get yes. that seal out that would That would help him immensely here. Uh, cool. So that's uh, three for Mike and one for Andrew. Um, but there's a conflict of interest there. So... Uh, <laughs> 
No, there is no conflict. What are you <laughs> uh, so moving on to table three. Table three, we have another uh, Mid-Atlantic versus um, Midwest challenge matchup. We have Jake Hutton versus Kyle Poole. This will be the most flamboyant matchup possible. They will help <laughs> me in every way. <laughs> we'll spend uh, we'll spend the first fifteen minutes uh, doing interpretive dances. That's actually the game. They're gonna roll one d six, rolls <laughs> highest, and then dance off from there. And then and then and then uh, I, I can see very that. very visually and and auditorially loud. Uh, yeah. dance Kyle's is just gonna be nothing but hugs, and Jake is gonna do the little swirly thing, and neither of it's gonna make sense. He's got one he's, move. He's, he's got one move. That, that's his move. <laughs> Uh, so Jake is bringing Abyssal Dwarves. Uh, he's kind of switched off from Undead. And we've been moving towards Abyssal Dwarves for a while, so I'm excited to see what he's what he's doing with him here. Uh, he's got two regiments of Decimators. He's got a horde of Slave Orcs. I guess he didn't get the memo. You're supposed to bring like six of those. Uh, he's got he's two troops it. of. He's getting it. He's got two troops of Gargoyles. He's got a horde of Lesser Obsidian Golems. Uh, he's got two regiments of Abyssal Half-Breeds. One's got the Stain Stone. He has a horde of Abyssal Grotesques. He's got two Dragonfire teams. He has an Overmaster with Wings of the Honey Maze. He has Bracky Barka and Basuzu the Vile. Uh, and the Heralds of the Black Flame uh, formation, which I think does something. I believe that's CS1 to one. the regiments. Yeah. yeah. Uh, decimators. Yep. Yeah, both the yeah the decimators turns into boomers. For, it turns really them into boomers. Short boomers. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah, it turns them into slightly shorter, slightly slower boomers, basically. That's pretty cool. All right. And he is going up against Kapul, who is playing goblins. And he has one, two, three, four regiments of rabble and two hordes of rabble. He's got two hordes of flea bag chariots. He's got three war trombones. He has three flaggets. Uh, two of them are mounted on flea bags. Um, one of them has the banner of the griffin. Uh, the two that are mounted on flea bags, one's got the holy hand grenades and the other one's got the diadem. He has three mincers. He has three giants and a goblin mega blaster. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, Ray, what do you think? Well, this is not like any other goblin list I've ever seen. There's no wizards. I think it's the first time I've ever seen a goblin <laughs> list with no wizards at all. So, You've only played Jeff O'Neill, though. It's yeah. a very biased selection. I also sure. played Chris. I played Chris twice now, one and one. Um, but both of them take wizards. So uh, I like Kyle's list. Uh, I like the fact that it is a fun goblin list. I think at the critical moment, he might be screwed over by that yellow belly because it does come up, especially with the flea bag chariots, which he's hoping on in this list to do some work. Uh, Jake has all the tools uh, combined with viciousness, which as we discussed before, can really hinder and really hurt a low defense army and nothing in Kyle's list is higher than defense four except the giants. Right. Answers. Uh, the mega blaster is defense six in front. Right. In front. Got a big shield. Yeah. Now Jake is going to be the utter sportsman that he's capable of being for the mid Atlantic because he's going to take over from Jesse. So he's going to hit that goblin mega blaster really, really hard. And he's going to outdo what I did at TNT. So he's going to draw <laughs> six for range instead of five. And then he's going to roll 11 wounds instead of 10. And he's going to blast apart his arm. Um, somehow, though, I still have to give it to Jake because I played Jake's Abyssal Dwarfs and they've kicked the snot out of me multiple times. And I have the faith that he has what he needs against my Ratkin so he can take care of some goblins. But I, I like Kyle's list. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. I am wishing him the best. But... Uh, um, Jake's list has been evil against low defense. Mm. Well, like they say, uh, best thing against a bunch of hammers is a bunch of stuff that doesn't give a crap about your uh, 
crushing strength. So I think Kyle's uh, army box is actually going to have waste management on the side because <laughs> if there is an Ohio go. trash meta, he is the prophet of it. He's like, oh, cool. Choke on this 80-point uh, rabble regiment. Oh, choke on this unit that costs like three points. Um, especially for pillage. I mean, just going to be able to cover the board like that. I mean... I don't know how Kyle does it, to be honest with you. He's like the David Copperfield of Kings of War. Like, you look at this, like, there's no way this list should work. But he just, he makes it work. I, I, I wish I could tell you. But, yeah, so, I mean, I hate to beat the homer, but you know what? I'm the lone Midwest guy, so I'm going to be the homer. So I'm going to vote for uh, vote for Kyle on this one. Because I just think Jake's got some hammers. If he had brought more Abyssal Golems, maybe I could see... But he's just got not enough high defense stuff to really have Kyle to worry about. And he'll just hold you in place while he goes secure his objectives. So. I'm in agree. With you. I hope you're right. <laughs> I'm voting Kyle on this one. Uh, I think Jake is really going to miss his War Machines that he used to take, and he dropped them for this event. And this is the matchup you really want three shot, last D3 plus one vicious War Machines. It's this one to go pick apart the support pieces that he needs, put a few wounds on those giants and get them prepped for his combat so his hammers can actually kill them. Uh, I really think Kyle is set up perfectly for pillage on this one. And that blaster, if he plays it right, could easily take put 8, 10 wounds on multiple Jake's units. I think it's going to depend on that blaster, really. Um, but Jake doesn't have the range because he took out his war machines. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Kyle's coming in with more unit strength, and Jacob, outside of the grotesque, he's got a couple of faster units, but most of his army is relatively slow. Uh, the decimators aren't getting up there. The, the golems aren't getting up there without any uh, surge. And so I just don't think Jake in this scenario is going to have enough time to get up there and strip off unit strength, and so Kyle's going to win this. Yeah, the decimators will do really well in this particular matchup, though, unless Kyle devotes the chariots into him. Right. They have a pretty it'll solid take answer. decimators three turns to get up there to shoot something. I mean, <laughs> it'll take two, double the first one, and then you're up eight, and then you go four more. Yeah, but there's just so much cheap crap for him to go through. And like, sure, the decimators will take one off a turn, but it'll take them a couple turns to get there, and then they're going to spend the whole game, assuming they don't get punched by like the Zuzu. Or and they're just regiments. They're not hordes of decimators. They're just regiments of decimators. So right, yeah, right. So it'll it'll take. It'll, it'll take both of them to get rid of one of the units. Like, yeah, I, I don't think you can reliably take anything off with just with just one of them. No, I mean, I I took four rabble too because I like that setup. Right. <laughs> but Kyle's going to have to be careful with the flagets because they're they're mounted and they're height too. And if Basusu can see them, Basusu can charge them and eat them for breakfast. That's true. There, there's a lot of counterplay. Not a big deal in pillage. Nah. If Basus is going after the flaggets, that's probably a helpful thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he probably wants that. <laughs> yeah. There's not that many other great targets for Basus too, though, because he doesn't have anything that's going to shoot back that you need to shut down, really. And that or is the beauty of the trash meta. Basus is <laughs> good at shooting. <laughs> One of the mincers, preferably in the side, so you can actually pick it up. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. That's, but even then, Kyle's cool. out 80 points at that point. Yeah. And one unit. Yeah, one unit strength and eighty points. Woo! Yep, it's a lot. It's 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 a lot to chew through. I think you guys might be right that there's there's too much stuff here for Jake to chew through with the units that he has. Um, yeah, and all his crushing strength is kind of wasted against uh, the low defense. Also, right. we have yeah. we have a tradition. We never vote for Jake. Like, mm. Ray yeah, is not also a good. right. <laughs> I will say, though, one thing Jake can do is just be so dazzling with his dance <laughs> that, uh, you know, Kyle's just dumbfounded and just forgets and just walks away from the table. That's, I guess that's a good good strategy. So. Okay, so Jake, buy, buy an entire six-pack of beers and try to get Kyle to drink them all during the match and give him the old razzle-dazzle and maybe a win. <laughs> do the swirly move. There you go. <laughs> do a barrel roll. You got to work it. You got to work it. All right. Now we come to our featured match of the stream on the table four. The match that, that did start it all, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Felix Castro versus Joey Greek. So uh, Felix's list, he is playing Herd, 
Oh. He has two hordes of spirit walkers, two hordes of guardian brutes, one with the healing brew, and one with the mace of crushing. He's got two beast pack troops. He has one horde of stampede with the wine of elven kind. Nice. Uh, he has a flying chimera. He has a great chieftain on chariot, uh, with dwarven ale and a bow. He's got a centaur chief with the blade of slashing and a bow. And then he has two shaman. Uh, both have heal. One's got the shroud of the saint, and the other has the aura of heroism and the fireheart amulet. I like it. I like it. All right. And Joey uh, is bringing ogres. Surprise! And he is bringing. He is bringing yes, two, two legions of ogre warriors. Uh, yes. One with the potion of caterpillar, and one with the brew of strength. Um, he's got two hordes of boomers. He has three troops of red goblin scouts. Uh, he's got two. Army standards, one with the banner of the griffin and one with the loot. He's got two boomer sergeants. And then he has four hordes of red goblin rabble. Regiments. Regiments. Four regiments. Yeah. Right. What I say? Very regiment. different. What I say hordes? Oh, sorry. Four regiments. Red goblin rabble. It's not that trashy. Yeah, if it was if it was hordes of rabble, I would just table flip and just <laughs> uh, all right, Ray. He's okay, just struck uh, with the beauty of both lists. He just can't even talk about it. <laughs> to be fair, Joey's list, the first I heard of it was when we were coming back from TNT. So I know Joey submitted this list late. Because on the way back, <laughs> TNT, Joey and I are in the car for an extended period of time talking about what can defeat the Midwest trash meta. The Mid Atlantic trash meta. The Mid Atlantic <laughs> trash meta. So, you can't beat them, you join them, right? Joey comes up with the question, what can withstand an Ogre Legion? And we come up with a few things that could, like maybe, maybe the vampires could if they're a whole regiment and the Legion doesn't have Brew of Strength or it doesn't have the Potion of the Caterpillar right. that's running through that train. So we're like, okay, if you have an Ogre Legion with Brew of Strength, what can withstand it? Nothing. What can happen? Zombie oh. Legion. Zombie, yeah, zombie. Say, zombie Legion probably could, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah. That one dies to the Ogre Legion with brutal sharpness. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But Joey's answer was, well, a zombie legion can handle it, but it can't handle two ogre legions. <laughs> Hence the reason why there are two ogre legions in this list. Right. Because Joey's coming up with what he thinks can beat Felix. Who I offered to swing my vote in his favor for a beer, and neither Joey nor Felix took me up for the offer. He did. That's a good point. He's not wrong. He'll yeah, use my cooler anyway. Pardon? He'll use my cooler anyway. I don't see the problem. <laughs> so neither of them voted for me, and I like Joey's list because he talked to me about it for approximately five hours during the drive. So I think it's absolutely... The Mona Lisa of King's War. You can't get any better than this list. I, feel like I, like, I like your thinking. I like your thinking. I, I, like um, I, I, I tell like... you, honestly, it's funny. It's, it's, it's not the legions I'm worried about. It's not the boomers I'm le worried about. It's all the BS he can throw in the way to prevent me from getting to those two. Because I've one-shotted legions before. That, I'm not even worried about that. Um, it's not being able to get to them, and then you get the counter. You get the first charge off on me. That's that's just obvious. Like you said, it's deleting units. Uh, so that's really the tough part. That's that's the only thing I can really bank on is I'm not entirely certain how much Joey has with this list in terms of tabletop experience. Um, and all I can hope for is that we both don't know what we're doing with the list. Um, that's kind of what I'm banking on right now is that we both don't know what we're doing with the lists and. Uh, because, I mean, like I said, if it wasn't for that, all that rabble and all them goblin scouts, I would just look at this list and be like, <laughs> yes, I win. But uh, with all that stuff you can throw in the way, it's, it's going to be tough for me. It's, it's an uphill battle. I'm not, not going to lie. Um, 
Felix, what I was busy calculating at the start was the unit strength of the two armies. Right. And it's 18 to 27. Well, that's ogres. Ogres are always going to... If ogres don't have at least 18 <laughs> unit strength, you're doing it wrong. That's just... But because that's everything's horde. Yeah, so. every, everything's everything's hordes for them. So it's just eh, I'm not even I'm not even worried about that. Um, but yeah, it's it's like I said, it's going to be a up, uphill slog for me. Um, not going to lie. But uh, I mean, obviously, you got to go for myself <clears throat> on that one. Uh, so park me down uh, for the win. But uh, it's going to be a great matchup. I mean, Joey's a great competitor. Uh, it's great. Gentlemen, for for calling me out with a weird, creepy rabbit. And they gift. didn't bring the army. <laughs> they didn't bring the army. Uh, well, I didn't bring any World War II Nazis with me either, so you know it works out. So, I think uh, everybody's grateful. Yeah. Well, a little bolt action on the side. Pew. Um. But yeah, so uh, it's gonna be a fun game. We're gonna see how drunk we can get. Um. It's gonna be fun time. Fun times. So. All right, uh, Joey. Uh, I assume you have Felix in this one. Uh, since you know this <laughs> um, well, since, pillage, since we're playing pillage and all, right? Pillage is my only loss of this list. You know, yes, That's all two of my games. But uh, I think pillage is actually just as bad for her too because they want to condense a lot of their hitting power outside of a stampede. It's the guardian birds are TC two crushing one. Correct. But they're speed five, right? Speed six. They're speed six. Okay, so they could get in there, but if they're getting into the rabble, then they're dying immediately on the rebound. So that's not well. Once yeah, once the rabble dies, whatever comes back against them will kill them. Yes. That's, yeah. yeah. Rabble's so, not really standing up to herd charges. So. Yeah, I was. I'm excited about this list to try it out. Um, I played it twice against Mike, and the first game was pretty rough. The second game was also rough uh, with eighteen. <laughs> bajillion snake eyes but uh once you got around that and you realize the yoga legion just will do 20 wins a turn it just deletes stuff really matter as long as i don't roll the snakes it's pretty consistent but um yeah if i took night stalkers you'd probably have a much better matchup <laughs> i'd be much worse off with those night stalk my night stalker build but well, that's why this I, one I'm gonna go for me. That's why I kind of imagined you weren't going to take the night stalkers because with the night stalkers being stealthy and her DGAF about you know stealthy. Figure you weren't gonna go with that. So good good call on the ogres. <laughs> so all right, Rock, what do you think? So for me, I think the game comes down to stampedes, because stampedes can pick up those legions. So as soon as the legions show themselves, as long as the stampedes are still in play. Well stampedes only doing average. twelve wounds on average. Thirteen. You got both stampedes back, so he's so I he's think Felix will just pick up all that. Oh, he didn't me tell. And Felix will just pick up all that chaff with the other stuff, and as soon as the legion presents itself, to one stampede and some help, two stampedes, whatever happens, the legions will go down pretty quickly. Um, and I think that Felix has the units it takes to clear off that chaff. He'll lose brutes or spirit walkers, or whatever he's going to lose, but that's not the game. The game comes down to stampedes. I think Felix can keep them back, so I'm going to pick Felix. Sorry, Joe. I will oh, give man. you a fu I will give you a fun <laughs> fact. Uh, two Guardian Brute Hordes will pick up a Legion of Ogres. So. What about one? How about one? Uh, no, because that's probably about twelve wounds, and just like a Stampede, probably not going to, probably not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. What so I'm wondering is whether or not your two Hordes of Boomers are going to kill. All of the spirit walkers before they can get into combat, or just one of the the hordes of spirit walkers. So, Joey, just so you know, my prediction, because neither of you offered a beer, <laughs> so, for the first time in Kings of War, we're going to have a double loss. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> this is going to happen, but both Joey and Felix will time out, resulting in a loss for both sides. We're both going to be <laughs> drinking. So Unfortunately, much. I have never timed out in a game in Kings of War, so he'd have to really get me drunk. And I have the fastest recorded game in Kings of War history. That is true. With Robert. <laughs> My very first tournament game with Goblins, I had five minutes left on the clock. So I, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know what was offered, and neither of you guys took it. So Ray's saying he's spiking both of our drinks, so we're going to have absolute ass stomachs. 
<laughs> Saturday morning. Mm. I mean, it's already a rookie mistake to start drinking before lunch on Saturday. So that's what or is it a winning do, mistake. <laughs> I think that's a secret Mike's trying to keep from us. I think is what it is. Right. I yeah, only win when I drink. Mike can attest. Uh, I, well, when you drink and you're playing Invade with that list, that's two, two, two different things. Like, don't, uh, don't confuse which one contributed more there. Um, uh, definitely the alcohol. Def definitely the alcohol. Uh, so moving on to table five. Uh, table number five, we have, this is another, uh, this is the final Mid-Atlantic Mid uh, Midwest Golden Sweater Challenge match, I think. Uh, and this is going to be uh, Tony Nelson versus Matthew Vermeiren, is that how you say his name? Vermeer? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Cool. He's, he's our know. adopted mis Midwesterner, because uh, he's actually from Ontario. Oh, he's a, oh he's you have Canadian. Canadian. I think it's okay. I, I think it's in Ontario. I don't know. Forgive me, Matt, if uh, Mike, if I got it wrong, but I know he's from Canada. So okay, that's fine. Every every uh, region is required to have a uh, a token Canadian uh, ambassador. So. There you go. Hopefully, uh, uh, Ray and Matt can play at some point later in uh, in the tournament, and we can have a have a Canadian off. Um, you know what that looks yeah. like, right? They're both just like, no, you go first. No, you go. No, first. you first. No, no, after you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you first. No, sorry, you first. I routed one of your units. Hey, eh? I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> that's that's my Canadian playing Kings of War impression right there. You heard it first, I, folks. I, I was going to vote for Tony, but now I'm. <laughs> 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 They're just going to stand there and drink and sing O Canada for two hours. Anyway, uh, so Tony is bringing in ogres. There's a lot of ogres at this tournament. Um, so Tony's list is uh, two hordes of ogre warriors. Uh, one's got the potion of caterpillar and one's got brew of strength. He's got two regiments of berserker braids. He has a horde of siege breakers. He's got two hordes of boomers. One has Blessing of the Gods, and the other has Chant of Hate. He's got a troop of Red Goblin Scouts. He has an army standard with the Loot of Insatiable Darkness. He has a Warlock with the Aura of Heroism. And he's got two boomer sergeants. Uh, one has the Inspiring Talisman. Uh, and then he's got two Red Goblin Bigots. They are both mounted on flea bags, and one of them has the diadem of dragon kind. And then Matthew's list. Matthew, I believe, is the only orc player uh, at the tournament. Uh, so gentleman. he has true gentleman. He has a horde of axe with the potion of caterpillar. He has a regiment of more axe. He's got a horde of great axe with the fog. He has two troops of skulks. He has a horde of trolls with dwarven ale. He's got two regiments of gore riders. With one of them has the staying stone. He has two god speakers uh, with heal. They're both mounted on a gore. Uh, one of them has the shroud of the saint, and the other one has alchemist curse and the inspiring talisman. He has Gakamak, a giant, and a war drum. Okay. Uh, Ray, what do you think? To be fair, I, I really like Matthew's list. Um, when I was looking at it earlier today, I got your list earlier today, and I was able to review it last night. It's how I would make an orc army. I, I like the God Speaker with the Shroud of the Saint and the plus one that you'll get for the Hordes in proximity. You're going to have an easy heal seven or eight. Um, so so I, I think the Orc list is, is very, very solid. Um, I, I like Tony's list. It, it's Ogres. I remember Tony at Mountaineer last year. He, he was at the table ahead of me at game three. Uh, we both played Sean, or sorry, Joey. At different points and neither beat me though so what's it worth but tony <laughs> placed a lot higher than me so i have a lot of faith in his ogres um this is the last showing of the rebellious american ogres so 
I, I was going to give it to Matt, uh, Tony, and then I heard Matthew was Canadian, and then Tony volunteered to buy me a beer. So I think <laughs> we're going to draw on this one. So please put me down for a draw because somehow I think uh, Canadian pride has to come through to an extent, and Canadian and, and the offer of beer has to be there. But I like I, I like the work list. It's not something we see a lot. It has a lot of punch. It has some speed. It has a lot of things I like. And Tony's list is really good with the boomer sergeants. It has the chaff. It has the capability to play and to get the charges. I just don't know if he'll get through the orc nerve. And I think the hordes on both sides, enough will be left to contest objectives. Yeah, that's pretty. I you know I, I actually did do some research looking at these lists earlier today, and I this is the one list that I was able to look at. And I was kind of like, I, I, I didn't know because you know, obviously Tony, you know, with his uh, you know rebellious ogres is is pretty decent with them, pretty good. Uh, Matt's list looks pretty solid as well. Um, honestly, I kind of have to give this one a toss up, but. Going off the fact I've met Matt before, I will go with him because it's all a coin flip anyway. So I'll go with Matt. Fun story about Tony. Uh, he was the first guy I ever saw my double ogre legion list, and he said he wanted to take it, and then he doesn't take it, but he takes like the items I used. So <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of just skeezing off of mine. Uh, but really, I think Tony should have taken his Varanger. His heart's a lot more into his Chaos Army. Um, these ogres, I played him at Varinger and he just, he wasn't feeling the army at all. Like he wasn't playing the decisive parts where he should have. And I think if he gets into the mindset of playing with it one last time, he can really do well here. But this is two armies that are both really good at pillage squaring up against each other. And Matthew's a strong player. He beat me at workings. Um, so... I think my vote's on Matthew, but it's going to be close. Like, this is probably on the 15 – well, it's Blackjack, so probably more like 14-7, maybe 15-6 range rather than a big win range. If Tony needs to, we can play Battle Him of the Republic or Yankee Doodle while he's playing if he needs to get into the spirit. It might help him a lot. I think I poisoned him because I gave him meat at Vanguard, and that might have just dragged the whole weekend down for him. You, you what? I gave him meat. <laughs> You know, and oh, I don't do that for everybody. Yeah, uh, this is my as a on this one, I think, um, like you said, they both are set up well for pillage. I feel like it's a little bit of a grindy game, and when you start grinding, all that heal that Matthew has back behind his army is really going to shine in a game like that. I don't know. You know obviously, some combo charges – can can help, but I don't know that Tony has a one punch knockout kind of uh, setup with what he's got going. Uh, love Tony, he's the man, uh, but I just think the hill in this setup is going to be tough for him to overcome. Uh, I'll go with I Matthew. Tony's really going for getting seventeen, nineteen ogre hordes. Like that's really what he wants to get, so he can help with that grind. But it's just not consistent enough for what he's trying to do. Um. He gets the bonus dice on it, so he probably will see Rally 2 five of the six turns, but there'll be one turn where he doesn't, and that could just be the end. Gotcha. All right, so that is, that's is—that's three votes for Matthew and uh, one conflict of interest based on beer and patriotism, <laughs> calling it a draw. <laughs> um, so moving on to table number six, uh, we have... Uh, we have Mike Zellmeyer versus Tim Smith. This ought to be a pretty good match. <laughs> Let the elf list begin. Let the elf as well. Mike, <laughs> Mike's, Mike's went first. So. Yeah, but this is where the string starts. Yep. Um, what do I got here? Is this Mike's list? I think I may have opened the wrong one. Hold on, let me grab it real quick. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yep. I somehow misplaced it. Okay. Uh, so Mike Zellemeyer is playing elves. Uh, he has the elf standard horde of kindred archers with the heart seeking chant. He has two regiments of stormwind cavalry. Uh, one has Macawar's potion of caterpillar, and the other has brute strength. 
Uh, he has a horde of Dracon Riders with the Chalice of Wrath. He's got a horde of War Chariots with the Brew of Courage. Uh, he has an Elven Mage on a horse, uh, kitted out with Bane Chant, Fireball, and the Inspiring Talisman. He has the Noble War Chariot, just one. Uh, he's got an Elven King mounted on a horse with the Holy Hand Grenade. Uh, he's got a Dragon Lord with the Chant of Hate. And he has the Green Lady. And then. Uh, Tim Smith is running Herd uh, with Forces of Nature allies. Uh, so his allies are two regiments of Forced Shamblers and a Pegasus. Uh, and then his core Herd list, he has a horde of Tribal Warriors with Brew of Haste. Yeah, he's got two regiments of tribal longhorns. He's got two beast pack troops. He's got two stampede hordes, one with a wine of elven kind and one with the staying stone. Uh, he has a great totem. He has a great chieftain with the wings of the honey maze. He has two shaman. Um, both have heal and wind blast. One is mounted and has the Boots of Levitation, and the other has the Fireheart Amulet, and he has the Cloven Stalkers Formation, which I'm not familiar with. That gives the Tribal Warriors Horde, the two Longhorn Regiments, and the Great Chieftain Vanguard. Ooh. Gives them Vanguard. Okay, I, I wonder, those aren't, those aren't units you see very often, so I, I was guessing they Hence, hence I said, ooh, with the Brew of Haste, because that allows them to Vanguard 14 inches. Yeah, that's huge. Ooh. Yeah, like so it. this this is interesting. This this you know, if I had to pick a match to watch the first round, I think I might watch this one because so that's a total of to be. five vanguarding units, I believe. Yeah, six, right? Because he's got two four shamblers. Yeah, two four shamblers, the horde, two longhorn regiments, and then the great chieftain. So yep. yeah. great chieftain, oh, okay. six. Yeah, wow. and the chieftain's got wings, so he can do twenty if he was that squirrely, I guess. Well, it's really Tim. He's the type of guy who vanguard and say, "If I win the roll, good game. If I don't, good game." That's right. That's his style. True. All right, Ray. What do you think? So I played Mike on Monday, and I'm going to begin by saying that Mike's um, Mike's army is really well painted, and I think it's going to be one of the ones in contention for best painted at Mountaineer. It's um, a, a Song of Ice and Fire themed with all the different houses mm -hmm. uh, for each of the different elements of the list. So it's a, it's a very pretty list to play. It's a very pretty list to uh, play against. Uh, he's promised that there's a new dragon that's going to be displayed next weekend. He didn't have it there past weekend, so looking forward to seeing it. So, Mike, there, there are many reasons to why, to, why you'd want to watch this besides a super fast Forces of Nature list versus an Elf list. That being said, uh, Mike does have a lot of punch in his Elf list with the two Stormwind Cavalry, the Chariots, and the Dracon Riders. Um, that being said, Tim, with five Vanguard moves, can absorb it. I did not realize this when I, I, I looked at Tim's list earlier today. I didn't quite go down to what the uh, formation gave it. And when I'm looking at what that does, wow. Uh, the only thing I think it, I would have liked to have seen if I was Tim was a uh, source of inspiring for the forces of nature because he has approximately 400, 300 points, 400 points, 300 points up there. And if he could have gotten a, a source of inspiring, it, it may have helped, it might not have. Um, but I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on Mike early on. Uh, I think it may be a case where Tim goes up, Mike hits him, and it's decided on the first turn dice roll, uh, which would be unfortunate because it looks like this could be a really interesting game. Um, it all depends on how Tim plays it. I think they both have the tools they need to beat the other. Uh, I'm probably going to go with Tim, though Mike. I want to say Mike, but I think Tim with the Vanguard has 
the ability to put the pressure out there. All right, Felix? Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with Ray because, I mean, that just <laughs> – with that – formation i've i've been tempted to try it out myself especially with the herd like he's in your grill super fast and that can help offset a little bit of the our the herd's inherent weaknesses to shooting um so if he gets the turn one like you said good game he doesn't get turn one also a good game so i mean it can decide these matchups really damn quickly um but tim's a fairly you know i like his aggressive style of play i met him like once before uh, i like his list building uh, he's always had pretty good thoughts to say in the Gathering the Herd Facebook group. Cheap plug. Um, so I'm going to have to go with Tim on that one. So, <laughs> All right. Joey? Um, normally, if you just hear the Elf Herd matchup, you're probably just going to auto-pick Elves because that's how that goes 95% of the time, maybe 80. kind of depends. But I think Tim's really got a list that's designed to beat that Elf matchup but, or at least assist it to make it down to like uh, – it's on the 60 side of a 60 40 rather than on the 30 side of a 70 30. Um, the only thing is Zell, Zellmeyer is like the most technical player I've ever met. Um, he is probably the single sharpest guy ever. If there's one guy to beat a list designed to be elves, it's probably him. I think I'm going to go Tim on that it's pillage and Mike only has 10 drops versus Tim's 14. But I think Mike might be able to swing this one his way. It's it's going to depend on that first turn roll. Like, that's really going to be a big swing. Uh, if Mike can just clean up four units turn one, then Tim right. can be in a pretty rough spot. And it depends on where everything ends up on that Vanguard. Tim's opponent's got to be really sharp to get those stampedes in the game turn two. Right. But he drills for also, as he reminds us in chat, don't forget the totem, which gives rallying and inspiring. So he can definitely uh, get I know. those cords up to pretty yeah. high pretty damn quickly. Uh, so. I don't think it's the, sh the hordes that Mike's going to be really worried about. Like Everything that Mike charges is all speed 9. He's going to pick the spots where he wants to be. Right. Fair. So you think you pick just... I'm going to pick Tim on this one, but this is another one where I really think this could be like a 13-8 over something major. Sure. I think uh, this is going to be close, but it's going to be determined on the first roll. I think this is the scenario Tim probably didn't want to catch Michael because pillage, uh, the Vanguard really doesn't come into its own on pillage like it like a loot. What would you do against it on loot? You'd just be in a, a world of hurt. But on pillage, Tim's probably going to have to keep a few things back, assuming the tokens are spread out. Um, I think right. moving up there is not a big deal. I mean, he's going to move up into his face. One unit can cross the line. I guess that could cause some problems if Mike just sets up right on the line, but if he's an inch back, then that really negates that. He's got the speed, and more importantly for me, the flyers. I, I don't know really where Tim... I was saying, Mike's going to spend the next four days studying this matchup. <laughs> I know him. He is going to practice this probably four times at some point. Like, somehow he's going to practice this matchup. No somewhere. doubt. So, and I know Tim plays a lot of flyers. He plays, you know, Keith Randall and myself, and we usually take a lot of flyers. So he is adept at keeping his herd covered from flyers. But I think for me, that's the the, the that's the the game right there. So I'll go with I'll go with Michael on this one. The the issue is is that if the stampede is within range of the tribal warriors, such that. If Mike hits the tribal warriors and kills them, and even if he backs up three inches, he's hit by a stampede or two, Mike's yeah. in trouble. And I'm thinking that's we'll really restrictive on your deployment, though, because the 14 inch charge range of those stampedes means that you have to, your vanguards have to be very precise to leave them in range post turn one yeah. charge if you don't get it. I haven't played Tim, but I have faith in him. Yeah. <laughs> Tim likes real dice, so this list doesn't surprise me for him. Yeah, again, I think I think we're all in agreement that like this is whatever happens, it's going to be pretty interesting and probably pretty cool and spectacular. So like, yeah, if anybody, uh, I don't know if anybody's just coming to spectate at Vanguard GT, but uh, if if I were the TO and I was going to pick a first round matchup to live stream, it would probably be this one, just because I think it'll it'll be the most interesting one to to just just to see what happens. Because like you guys say, depending on who gets the first turn roll and depending on where the tokens get placed. 
And depending on how deployment goes, like uh, this, this could go spectacularly one way or another, or it could be like a, just a really fascinating like chess, chess match to watch for two or three turns or something like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens here. I will place a beer bet that this will be the quickest game of round one. Cool. I hope awesome. not, because me and Joey's going to be pretty quick one way or another. <laughs> so I was hoping to catch this one after we were done. <laughs> so do you want? You guys will still be bet? deploying. You guys are still going to be deploying. When you're done playing, okay? True. Uh, all right, so let's move on to uh, table number seven. Uh, here we have Sean Moore uh, versus Dan Leutsch. And Sean Moore is playing dwarves. He has two regiments of bull workers. He has a horde of ironclad with healing brew. He's got two troops of rangers, two regiments of brock riders, one with caterpillar and one with brew of haste. Uh, he's got two flame belchers. He has two army standard bearers, one with the loot and one with banner the griffin. He has your Dwarf Standard, Berserker Lord, mounted on Brock with Blade of the Beast Slayer. And he has two Steel Behemoths. Uh, then Dan is playing Elves. He likewise has the Elf Standard Horde of Kindred Archers with Heart Seeking Chant. He also has two Regiments of Palace Guard and a Horde of Kindred Tall Spears with Brew of Strength, so you know what's coming later. Uh, he has a regiment of Stormwind Cavalry with the Chalice of Wrath. He's got two hordes of Dracon Riders. One of them's got Fire Oil. Uh, he's got an Army Standard Bearer with the Loot of Insatiable Darkness. He has an Elven Mage with Bane Chant and the Black Iron Crown, as one does. I don't say as you do because I'm an aristocrat and we're fancy, so you say as one does. It's proper English. Uh, he, has, he has an Elven Prince. Uh, mounted, and he of course has the Green Lady and the Honor Guard of the Green Lady Formation. Uh, and then he's also got a troop of Battle Cats. I think that, I think that might be one of the new units. They decided well, in, yeah. in copy also, Mike, just say it's how we do in our county, because that's how <laughs> not your county, our county. <laughs> our county. Uh, all right, uh, Ray, what do you think? Dwarves or elves? I'm thinking. And hear me out. I'm thinking that this is Sean's tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We we've we've already failed to hear you out. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm thinking as this cold drawer with the defense six he has and defense five he has uh, the double beh steel behemoths. It, it it's something. I think he has the tools he needs to do well. I, I think it's his tournament to shine. I think this is probably one of those hard first matchups. The Dracon Riders do not have Pathfinders. They do not have Crushing Strength. They do not have Brew of Sharpness. Um, I, I think his his troops can take those, especially if they're in train. Um, I, I think his double Steel Behemoths with the Breath Weapons can can do a, a wonder on the kindred tall spears. Um, I, I, I think really Sean has the opportunity to do a lot and to do very, very well. I'm placing him top four right now uh, at this tournament. Uh, that's me going out there. I, I, I saw his list. I think it's good. I think he has the tools. Uh, that being said, Dan was the first person who I lost to in Kings of War. My third game, he played a double jack on list at 1,200 and 50 points. So I, I, I have a lot of respect for Dan. I know he can play his list. I, I know he's good. But I only see one Bane chant. And this is going to sound silly. Uh, the second with the loot. But you, you really need a lot of Bane chant. You need a lot of crushing to go against uh, Sean's uh, defense. And I don't think it's there. And I don't think the Pathfinder's there. I think Sean's going to use the terrain. This is me coming out in favor of Sean. Uh, Sean has this one. All right. Before we go on to uh, Felix, I would uh, like to introduce uh, uh, round of applause. My minor internet celebrity and all-around big deal, Jesse Cornwell, has entered the, uh, the live stream. Hi. 
Yeah, my bad, homies. How do you miss my ogre list? Like, come on, Jesse. He was ashamed. Yeah. <laughs> it's really a goblin list that happens to have two ogre legions. Well, you know, you gotta you gotta save the the minor internet celebrity world like Jesse has to. You know, things happen. Let's <laughs> get busy. Right, so dark, we don't want to dilute the brand. I can only show up for so long for so many things. <laughs> the high demand. Uh, That's right. Okay. Uh, so Jesse, did you did you hear both of the lists for this matchup, Sean Moore versus uh, versus Dan or uh, Dwarves versus Elves? Uh, yeah, I remember looking at it. Um, there we go. We finally pulled up the list. Sorry, apparently today at work, all I did today was read list, and I'm like, oh, cool. I'm gonna come home, and I passed out because I'm old. So yeah. <laughs> Um, you need your jug of sweet tea. Like that's really what you need. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't. I'm gonna go Sean. Cuz Sean. That is my. Uh, I like his style. Key. Concise. Yep. Concise. That's, what <laughs> that's we need. very very cutting analysis. That's I good. like it. That's good. Oh, so I'll be we're gonna pop over Felix. That's okay. We're gonna pop over to Felix, but like no no judgments about getting home and, and falling asleep. We are we are very familiar in my household with the all important post dinner pre bedtime nap. So no judgments here. Um, Felix. That's that's fair. Um, yeah, this is another one I kinda got to look at prior. I don't know either of these gentlemen. At least I don't think I have. I've had some beers and slept since the last tournaments I've been to. Um, but Going off of just purely random selection of stuff, I'm gonna go with Sean because I remember the immortal words of Gimli: "No one, nobody tosses a dwarf." So, go with that. Right. Y'all are putting me in a really awkward spot because Sean has never won a game where everyone has picked him, <laughs> <laughs> and he's my clubmate, and I'm the guy who got him into this. So this will be the first time. Been, There's always a first time. Vote for him. But it's also Sean, and I know he's going to get really frustrated playing against double Dracons. Like, he does not like playing against a lot of flyers. That's the bane of his playing existence. Um, if Sean can keep himself cool, he probably can do this with the Bulwarkers. They're going to be a really clutch piece against those Dracons if he can keep them in the way. Uh, otherwise, I think if Dan uses his speed well to mitigate those steel behemoths, he's got a good shot at this. So I'm going to go Dan, and Sean's about to punch me in the nuts. But you're going to see him just fly on screen. <laughs> this is going to be a really awkward first round now. <laughs> it's going to be a really awkward drive up from Richmond. Are you guys driving me? <laughs> yeah, but unlike Felix, I'm the one with the car. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, right, right. Right. I'll go with Sean. It's been said. I think the high defense wins this one. So let me have Sean. All right. So that is uh, four four votes for Sean, and uh, somebody voted for Dan. I forget who. Uh, the um, club mate. The club mate. <laughs> I'm trying not to throw you under the bus, man. Work with me. No, throw me uh, under the bus. It's where I belong. <laughs> we just went to right. a really dark place. <laughs> Well, the sun has gone down here, and it's so so. This is now technically after dark. Jesse's online, so it's it's after dark now. Oh, baby! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so moving on to table number eight, uh, we have Bill Goodrick versus Robert Brandon. All right. Uh, so Bill is bringing herd, as he as he usually does. He's got two troops of harpies. He's got two hordes of guardian brutes, uh, one with the push and the caterpillar. He has two hordes of lichens, two troops of beast packs, uh, two stampede hordes, one with brew of sharpness and one with brew of haste. He's got two shaman, both have heal. Uh, one is mounted and has the Shroud of the Saint. And he has the Tribal Totem Bearer. All right, and Robert Brandon is bringing Night Stalkers. What? Night Stalkers is two regiments of Nightmares. He's a pushover. <laughs> Three Fiend Hordes. One with the Brew of Sharpness, one with the Brew of Strength, and one with the Potion of Caterpillar. Uh, 
Uh, he's got three planar apparitions. Uh, he's got two void lurkers, one with a staying stone. And he has a dread fiend with the uh, blade of slashing. Interesting. All right. Uh, what do you think, Ray? I, I'm amazed because I think actually Robert is outspeeded on this list. I, I think Bill actually has more speed and, and the ability to force the combat where he wants it to go, uh, which actually surprised me because Robert's list is not slow by any stretch of the imagination. Just in my run, it is. <laughs> Pardon, Jesse? Just for that round, he's slow. Just for that round, he, he, he misses that critical uh, that piece. However, Bill's list doesn't have the punch with his past elements. Um, so he's going to have to be very careful and very technical with using a, the harpies and the lichens to accept the fact that he's going to have to do a first charge, have those units deleted by Robert in the counter charge, and then thump with the stampedes or the guardian brutes or whatever's coming up in that second wave. So Bill's list is really a, a two-wave list that's going to hit Robert. And the question is whether or not Robert, whose list is extremely fast, can absorb the first wave, counterpunch, and then stand with enough strength to hit the second wave. And, and that's really the question. Neither of them have a lot of drops. Um, both of them are fast. This is going to be a chess game to watch. Uh, Who are you going with? I hate the planar operations. I think I'm going to go with Robert because of the planar operations with ensnare. I think they make amazing pieces of pain in the ass uh, chaff that I don't know how he's going to use, but are going to be placed in the front of stampedes when necessary to absorb punches. All right. Uh, Jesse, what do you think? Uh, but I've played him. I've never got to play against Robert because usually he's on the top table when I'm walling around the mid tables. I have played Bill in one of those rare times uh, that I've done well. Um, both these guys are one of those really friendly guys who you're laughing and you're giggling. And you're like, yeah, this is cool. Next thing you know, half your shit off the table and you're like, what just happened? <laughs> you're like, man, this is a really great game. Wait, shit, what happened? What? what? Oh, God. Um, but, man, damn it. Um, Bill, like I said, I played Bill, and he's nothing to sneeze at. I honestly think if Robert can survive that alpha strike, I mean, between between the regen or excuse me, the yeah, just the, the ensnare being frustrating, and then he has heal. So anything that that Bill hits that doesn't take off, it's just gonna heal back up. I'm gonna say Robert on this one, but it's gonna be super close. And if one of them just has a brain fart, then yeah, that's it. It's game over, man. But I'm going to say Robert on this one. Alright, Felix? I love having these guys in front of me for analysis, because I'm just like derp, 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 I play Kings of War. I don't know. Um, looking you at know, this there's, one... There's five masters and one not. I just wanted to point that out, Felix. <laughs> um, so looking at that, I, I, what... Uh, Ray and Jesse are both right. You know, the problem is, is the Nice Stalkers list, it, it lacks the ability to absorb the Alpha Strikes. Now, if he can mitigate um, the Alpha Strikes, the uh, Wind Blast from the Nightmares might help a little bit. Um, depends if it helps enough. Um, but it can, because you know, obviously the herd have the kind of, a, they lack the ability to reach out and touch if it's not charge range. Um, touch. Yeah, <laughs> baby. So, um, so looking at that, I'm going to go with Bill because uh, when I asked in my herd group who was coming to Mountaineer, he had the, the testicular fortitude and the, and the bravery to say it was him. So I'm going to go with Bill, and I'm going to buy him a beer at Mountaineer. So just come meet me, Bill. I got you. If he drinks. Does he drink? If he not, I'll get him a soda or something. All right, Joey. Um, this is pretty tough because uh... – Robert's beaten me every time we've played, and I don't think Bill has beaten me yet. But I really <laughs> yeah, like Bill's <laughs> uh, I think given his pillage, I might be giving the tilt to 
Robert with those planner apparitions because they hold the two back tokens that are going to be placed. Like if we're, if we're thinking seven tokens, those planner apparitions are going to do the hold that are in his deployment zone because they don't have to go much farther. And on turn five, they can nimble pivot it backwards and get onto the range. It's going to depend on those lichens for Bill. If Bill can get the lichens into positions, he can start swinging this. But Robert outspeeding him with those void lurkers is a big issue because lichens die a lot faster than they should. I want to give it to Robert. Um, you sound excited about it. Yeah. I don't want to give it to you. You know, you beat me on the last but, challenge. But, Joey, if I, if I can inter, interrupt, I, I think you're right because the uh, the herd don't normally have high defense. Like, the Guardian Boots are the only ones that yeah. had defense five. And those those fiends do an awful lot more against herd than they ever would against, like, dwarves or something like that. Like, that's the matchup you want for those fiends. If you can get them in first, the right. trick is getting them in first. Because you're crushing one and vicious against defense four or three. Just, it's literally brutal. It's 10 to 11 wins yep. every time. So, All right, Robert. So for me, my list revolves around the planner apparitions. The planner apparitions don't go. The list won't work. And he actually has the list to get around those apparitions. The lichens being faster than the fiends plus nimble is the big trick. So I actually think Bill's going to win this. Robert, I think you're really ignoring planner apparitions are height four. All you got to do is shove them right in the face of the lichens. They have no choice. Like it, it's not very hard. I've done it to Bill. Like I've done it to him. He knows to avoid that if he can. But this can be an if he can. I'm going with Bill. I'm going to fight the I'm not even going to show you first game, Bill. We'll see you round two. Yeah. Bill's going to ask you if there's a terror because he's absolutely afraid of that thing. Because last time we played, it took off two lichen hordes by itself, but. You're not running that, so he might play a little bit less scared. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Getting pizza. Uh, we're going to do one more table and then take like a five minute break, Jesse, if you want to wait. Oh, you're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> Fine. We'll be quick. We'll be quick. Uh, so the next matchup on table nine is uh, me versus Brad Winslow. Um, and I am playing Abyssals as usual. As you do. Um, as I do. Um, I have uh, a troop of gargoyles, uh, a horde of lower Abyssals with two-handed weapons. I've got a regiment of tortured souls. I've got two hordes of tortured souls, one with Blessing of the Gods and one with Brew of Haste. Uh, I've got a regiment of Abyssal Horsemen with Potion of the Caterpillar, a troop of Hellhounds, uh, an Abyssal Harbinger with a loot. I've got two of Freets with uh, both with a Bale of Shadows for all those elves I'm going to play later. Um, I've got an so Archfiend of Abyssal. Here. Mr. Cocky. Okay. <laughs> well, if not that, I'll end up playing Ogres that will also shoot at me a lot. Um, uh, my Archfiend of the Abyss has uh, Wings, uh, Lightning Bolt, and uh, Blade of Slashing. And, uh, and of course, Pazuzu the Vile, because never really felt me that way. Susan. Uh, Brad is playing uh, the Herd. He's got two hordes of Lycans. He's got four Beast Pack Troops. He has four Stampede Hordes. Uh, he has a tribal totem bearer mounted with the blade of slashing. Uh, and he has the avatar of the father. That is his list. All right. Uh, what do you think, Greg? So I played both Mike and Brad uh, quite a few times. Um, Brad and I, I, I think I've lost more times against Brad than what I beat him. And I think I've won against Mike more times than I've lost. But <laughs> Suck it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's harsh. But Brad's list, unlike the last time, Mike actually has the speed, when I was looking at these lists earlier today, to force the charges, to get the charges he wants against Brad's herd list. 
And that's not the position you want to be in as a herd player is to have your opponent dictate the charges against you. Whether it's the gargoyles, the tortured souls, uh, Mike can declare the charges he wants against brides, stampedes, and lichens and um, force the issue there. He can also outshoot him with the dually freets, which will have a field day against the stampedes. Uh, Mike, I, I was quite uh, surprised by your double veil of shadows on the Ifrits. I, I do think it'll help you in, in the future games against the uh, elves that you, you'll play against or overshooters um, because Jesse took a, a interesting list that we'll talk about later. But uh, I, I think you have it in, in game one. Uh, Brad, I like your list. It, it, it's aggressive. It's forceful. But I don't think you have the speed in, in, in the first game to handle Mike. And Mike's going to take advantage of his greater speed to force the charges that he wants, take away a thunderous charge, and uh, have the fights as he desires. All right, Jesse, what do you think? Wow, that's like some really in-depth. Like one, <clears throat> I love you, Ray. I do. <laughs> uh, one of these is a finely crafted list that has been tested and played and. <clears throat> distilled down into a machine of wrecking of just fury and vengeance. The other one is how many big stompy things you're gonna bring and push forward. So um, you're Brad, right? That yeah. <laughs> uh, like, everything that Ray said, yeah, Mike. I mean, just I looked at these today. Mike's faster. He's got 40 fireball, which the herd don't like to see. Um, and that's a big deal for her. They they count on being fast and hitting hard. And Stampede, the whole trick is to hit them the first time, and then you're just dealing with something that hits on fours the crush you want, which is a lot easier than dealing with that hits on fours and doesn't give a shit what your armor is. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm going to go a mic on this, but I don't know why. Just a sick part of me just want to see four Stampedes just murder stuff. <laughs> If I play her, that if I played her, that'd be my list. There you go. Mike also uh, has the five lightning bolt that we haven't talked about on his uh, height four item. Me. Oh, arch fiends are items now. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's really all they are. Simple you just upgrade. Dollars at a shop, and all of a sudden, three hundred twenty-five point artifact <laughs> like. Um, it's how no, he, he means the the arch fiend and basusu are an item. There's a whole storyline. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Oh, is there is there a storyline element to? There's a, a seven page time? essay that Mike is going to have to write now because oh, I said there is one. I'm, 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 I'm prepping for the ages. Blue City Brawl now. I, I have to get my my theater voice in in good shape so I can go read my seven page uh, backstory next year of Blue City Brawl. Um, uh, Felix. Love story for the ages. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Basusu and Archfiends. Um, very good points you, you gentlemen have made about, you know, just getting in the Torch of Souls to knock the TC off of a Stampede. Uh, downside is, is that last time I checked, Tortured Souls are only defense four. So they're still crushing one. It's fours and threes. So it's still going to put a hurt on those guys. Ten wins. Ten wins a pop. Yeah, and with it being dash 18, you're still looking at being able to pop them just on the counter charge, even lack losing Thunderous. Um, but given all that, um, really the only thing I would be concerned about really is the Ifrits. I mean, the, how the Ifrits perform is going to dictate how this game goes, in my opinion. Because, like you said, Ifrits are going to have an absolute field day with Stampedes. I mean, one round, round, round of shooting with two can basically take off a Stampede a turn. So... Um, if he can get them hidden away, because one thing with Brad's list is it kind of lacks the ability to swat at those guys. You know, he doesn't have that one winged character or whatever that can fly in and disorder in a freak for a turn or two. So uh, he might struggle with that. Um, so given that and the ability for the freaks just to kind of dance around and, you know, play gotcha games with Fireball 40, um, I'm going to have to give it to, to Mike on this one. Well, good luck, Brad. I want to see those things go choo-choo, bring the pain train. So, All right, Joey. against me, turn All two, right. round two, whatever. So, I think my vote's going to be Mike because it, Mike's a really fucking strong player. Like, he's damn good at this. He knows what he's doing, and he knows what he's doing well. If Brad is completely willing to throw away his avatar of the father, Brad can win this game. 
play. If Brad just throws away the avatar at one of the Afrites, Brad has a much stronger start from this. And normally that's not the right trade, is trying that 300 point unit for 130 point, but that's really the start he needs to make is just delete one of those fireball 20s and don't give a shit at what counter charges the avatar because you'll kill it with the stampedes. Um, <laughs> yeah, if Brad doesn't do that, which I doubt he will, but um, if he doesn't do that, Mike probably has enough space to maneuver everywhere he wants to be. Um, really, all I'm looking forward to is Brad shouting, hey, come look at this, as Mike charges in every single side of the stampede this game, because he did it last year at Mountaineer, and I want to see a repeat. <laughs> <laughs> but, Joey, I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, when I play Ratkin against Mike, just throw more, whatever you can. Than anything Afrit. else, the Afrit scared the living bejesus out of me. Yeah. And, and even a demon spawn against an Afrit. When I lost against uh, Alex, the master Chavez at uh, <laughs> Vanguard, his his one Afrit tore the living snot out of my army. So seeing two Afrits, yeah. they're, they're going to do business. Yeah, the other thing is if Mike rolls the freaks the way he did game one against me on Sunday where he's getting 18 hits a shot, he's going to do really damn well. If he's rolling like he did game two or he's only getting 10, he's going to do significantly worse, but he's still probably going to do well because that's still average. So roll 18 <laughs> hits is the strategy. Got it. That's, well, that's, that's what I... That's <laughs> Robert. You've said it. I mean, it's been said. Um, it's. I, I think it's a nightmare matchup for that herd list, so I'll go with Mike. Yep, I, I kind of agree with you guys. I love seeing herd with, with, with my army because my army does everything the herd does, only better, and I can shoot them to death. It's, um, it's also pillage where you can reform everything you want the way you want it on that turn five. Like, like I, will, I will lose... Half of my army getting this job done, but it'll be the cheaper half of my army, and I'll get rid of them on purpose to delay half the stampedes while I kill the other half and then turn around and kill the other half. Um, As a herdsman with your fuzz, I am the <laughs> fifth player. <laughs> Be gone. Be gone, long one. Yeah, um, Brad it's going to be a fun game. Sacrifice what he needs to. He's not going to be able to win this game. He has to be sure. willing to play with 500 points left at the end of the game for the win. Yep. That's me what it's and like. and if so if if I can get rid of all of those beast packs quickly without losing anything, then that game's pretty much over. If he manages oh. to kill like half of my chaff with his beast packs before they go away, then I'm gonna have trouble. If Brad hides a beast pack charge and a free on turn one, he's gonna do an awful lot better than if he doesn't. Just this is personal experience. Very true. Uh, all right, so that is about halfway through. Uh, we are now going to take a five-minute break, and we've been on for an hour and a half. So hey, we're right on schedule. So we're going to take a five-minute break, so Joey can get, so excuse me, so Jesse can get some pizza, uh, and uh, everybody feel free to go like, uh, refill your drinks, so get the restroom, whatever. We will be back in just a few minutes.
since we're still live and it's just me, this is a message from your sponsors. WKOW podcasts run by the Robert Brandon. Also brought to you by Midnight Brewery. This is a not my job English style brown ale, which is really delicious from Richmond, Virginia. And Robert is currently dealing with children, as it were. Ray is back, so now we have two people. How are you doing, Ray? Good. How are you doing? Pretty good. I've got three beers lined up now. One is in the glass. I don't know how much I've drunk at this point. <laughs> all I know is I have this bottle. Hey, can you all not holler so much stuff? Why? Because I'm still recording. Sorry. It's okay, baby. Okay. That is the bottle. Oh, You're interested in Midnight Not My Job? But I, I figured I'd do a public service announcement with uh, Tom Steve behind me. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Damn. That's big. So I figure I'm going to do that as a public service announcement for anyone on Friday night who wants to play. I have the models and the rules. Yeah, Ray's running uh, Helm's Deep scenario. There's going to be, I think it's four players aside, right? Uh, four players aside. Pick your hero if you want them. No one's picked a hero yet. Oh, uh, who wants to be like Aragorn? He's too paladin, ranger mix. Like Legolas is the real hero. Currently, I've run the game twice. I've actually had this model since 2006, but I've only played the game twice, and it's currently one and one. All right, everyone's back but Jesse, who's getting pizza, Rick. So. I'm here. I'm just double fisted pizza at the moment. Nobody needs to see that. That's not <laughs> even. <laughs> Thank you. I think everybody needs to see it once, just once, but never again. To be fair, that's all you ever need to see of it. Your life fulfilled after that. Exactly. I've seen. If you went to Masters Felix, you'd have seen it in yeah, person. That's true. Joey, if I went to Masters, I would know what you guys are talking about. You would have been like the first Canadian there too. Like it would have been a whole international community at that point. Well, I spoke to Dan about that, saying should there be like a Canadian team. <laughs> I like it. I'd support that, except you couldn't go to Canadian events like you live in D.C. Well, we could call it North American Masters. Yeah. I like Continentals. It. It's the North American Continentals, then. Well, it'd be like the World Series of Baseball, right? We right. should have one Canadian team, the Blue Jays, that counts as the World Series. Yeah, then we'd have to get the British people over because they'd throw a fit, hissy fit. Yeah. I'm down with that, yeah. Well, well, last time I threw a history fit was 1812. They'll get over it. <laughs> Jesse, that's not the one you want to use. That one didn't go quite That's the last time they threw a hissy fit that we cared about, Jesse. There's a difference. <laughs> We're America. Even when we lose, we win. Just ask Vietnam. <laughs> as long as you redefine what winning means, it's all good. Right. If you change that around, we've never lost. <laughs> We never lost a war we declared, and that's the technicality of it. Right. <laughs> that's right. And, so and we can retroactively go back and decide that if we didn't win, that it was, it was never actually a war. It was a police action. It's fine. It doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so 
uh, somebody was asking uh, about um, posting lists. getting the lists posted someplace so everybody can see them. Um, Want to do that after the cast is done? Uh, well, some, some folks are asking if they could read them to follow along. So Chris, uh, Chris actually just got home uh, and he's working on posting them now. So they'll be up okay. soon. Uh, so th there will be a URL available soon for folks to check out uh, to to follow along. Sorry if that's don't look at Jesse's. It's going to ruin every perspective you ever had in a man. Mike, what guys, do you, want, do, you, do you want to put a oh, note about nicer that right now? <laughs> What's that? Do you want to put a note about that in the uh, YouTube chat? Uh, no, I figured they can hear us saying it. Oh, can they see us right now? Yeah, we're still on. I didn't. I, I didn't pause the broadcast. <laughs> Thank God. I made marketing for WKOW because Robert decided yeah. to not be on. You're welcome. Gentlemen, <laughs> on Friday night, I offer you Helm's Deep. I plan on running two games because apparently Jake likes Lord of the Rings and so does Sean. Each game will run about two hours. Um, so if you show up, you can first come, first serve. There's four people aside. Come play. I don't get to pull up the models that often. I'm excited. Very cool. Uh, so one thing I want to mention is, is that uh, I did a similar cast to this for uh, my tournament, the Vanguard GT, um, a couple of months ago. And uh, I had an award that I 3D printed for the person that picked the most uh, matchups correctly. Um, but that person was not there to receive it. And that's Jesse Cornwell. Uh, but I will have it to give to you it's reversed there, but they can see what it is. Yep, I'm um, wearing that as a tournament. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll have it to give to you at uh, Mountaineer. It, it says uh, the Oracle uh, at the bottom, yeah. and uh, you can wear it as a medallion if you want, but it's designed to be used as a coaster. So you can, you can put your fancy new, uh, your fancy new, mount, yeah, there you go, your, your fancy new uh, Mountaineer pipe glass on your uh, Vanguard GT Oracle coaster. Um, so there you go. Uh, so moving on. Uh, moving on with the next matchup uh, on table 10, we have Paul Loster. Paul Loster versus Jesse Cornwell. Uh, what was that? Sorry. It's the sort of post that you're beginning, Mike, just so people know on the YouTube. Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, before we start, can we take a moment of silence for Paul? Because I'm just <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You'll I find out. Sorry, it. I like, Paul has this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesse, not sorry. You did this for me at Masters. <laughs> I'm doing this for you. I'm sorry for Paul. I'm it's so happy. <laughs> We're sorry. Take so you uh, folks uh, watching the stream will will know what we're talking about as soon as I get to Jesse's list here in a minute. But I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do Paul's list first. Uh, yeah. Paul is uh, playing L. Uh, which is funny because I'm pretty sure Jesse brought this list specifically uh, to counter elves. So he has uh, Paul has the uh, elf standard uh, kindred archers in a horde with the heart seeking chant. Uh, he has the sea guard. He has a horde of sea guard with wine of elven kind. He's got two regiments of forest shamblers. He has uh, your standard two hordes of dragon riders with potion of caterpillar and brew strength. Uh, he's got uh, the standard Elven Mage with uh, the Enchant 2 of the Black Iron Crown. Uh, he's got three Noble War Chariots. One of them has Blade of the Beast Slayer, and one of them has the Inspiring Talisman. Uh, he has an Elven King uh, mounted on a horse with Banner of the Griffin. And he has the, uh, the legendary uh, Silver Breeze Cavalry, the Windborn. Uh, they've got a pretty cool special ability where they uh, shoot and it counts as wind blast, but also does damage, which is kind of cool. Correction, uh, it's wind blast eight, and then it also does damage. It's not shooting and then wind blast effect. So it's it ignores stealthy, effect. cover, all that. It ignores everything. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. It's important when you're playing Night Stalkers for the first time, and Mike Austin brings that fucking unit against you. <laughs> <laughs> Do tell. All right, <laughs> and now I give you the new meta for the uh, for the Mid Atlantic. Uh, it's not Jesse goblins. Cornwell's <laughs> overlist. It is not goblins. Uh, uh, it is red goblins. Uh, totally different. 
He has me and Jesse, I think. We're playing more goblin armies than ogres. Quite possibly, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we should do a body count. Like, how many how many goblins versus ogre models are there in these armies? Uh, so, Jesse has one, two, three, four, five hordes of red goblins with bows. He has one, two, three, four, five hordes of ogre boomers. He has an army standard with the healing brew. He's got uh, three boomer sergeants, and one of them has fire oil, because I guess you just had five points left over. Um, and uh, that, is, that is the list. Um, that's, that's, that's something. All right. Um, <laughs> Ray, what do you think? Okay. Uh, Jesse, shame on you. <laughs> this is what I would expect from a very dirty southeast list, not <laughs> the mid-Atlantic. So with that said, uh, I think Paul has options. I do like the Sea Guard on this list with the well, uh, Wine of Elven Pine, uh, the Heart of uh, Heart Seeking Chant. Between the two of them, they can definitely put one horde of Red Goblins Probably two hordes when combined with the new noble war chariots into danger uh, because Jesse does not have a lot of inspiring. So you're going to look at my comments and, and focus that they're all for helping Paul because really Jesse should burn with this list. <laughs> so the kindred archers would do about 10 wounds to the horde of uh, red goblins, uh, the sea guard, probably about eight. And the normal war chariots can add the uh, a difference as required. Strip two hordes off the start. And then once you charge, the Dracon riders can each take a, a horde of boomers off the match. Um, I think you have the tools required to take on Jesse with his ogres. Uh, Jesse, I love you, man. But please, for the love of God, do not play this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking Paul. Jesse, you're last. We're okay. skipping. Oh, yeah, sure. Who's last? <laughs> 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 so, Felix, Felix right, then. Then. Yeah, All Felix. Right. Um, my <laughs> prediction is Andrew Summers gets sports because there's no way in hell <laughs> Jesse's getting sports with this list. Um, Jesse is actually, actually getting up his Master Sports Award to Andrew because of this. <laughs> that was the price he had to pay. Part of his soul and part of his sports. So, yes. Um, anything on the table? I, I really don't know. I, I looked at poor Paul's list briefly and saw Jesse's, and I was just like, okay, yeah, Jesse's. That's a, that's a dirty, dirty list. I had to take a shower after watch, reading the list this morning. It was that bad. Um, I don't even hey, smoke a cigarette, and I was lighting one up. It was bad. Um, Robert's excited. This type of list he knows how to comment on. This is all he sees in the Southeast. <laughs> <laughs> True, but uh, yeah, just to just to put it on there, I'll, I'll put Jesse down as if I, if I have to if I have to put a check mark to somebody's name, I'll just uh, yeah. So put it on me. Is that on me? Uh, yeah. All right. If I had a spot to pour one out, I'd pour one out for my man Paul because uh, he's gonna need it. Um, when I first read Jesse's list, I thought it was regiments of spitters, and at that point, I was like, "Oh, this is that's very polite of him." And then I reread it, and I was like, "Oh, it's like five hordes of spitters, and that's very not polite." Uh, I think an elf list other than Paul's, like George's elf list, I think might give Jesse some struggles. Uh, the biggest thing is going to be if you can take advantage of the boomer's twelve inch range, but. Like, Pillage is such a rough matchup for this list. Ideally, you want to see this on, like, push, maybe, where you can just hide something across and just block off shots. But, like, on Pillage with, what, nine hordes? Ten? That's, Ten. that's, that's just impossible. <laughs> like, the, ideally, Paul is going to take a Boomer Horde a turn, but... By turn six, he's taken them all off, and now he's still got five spitter hordes to deal with. And on objectives, like with blackjack scoring, this is going to really favor Jesse here. I got to go, Jesse. I 
I hate saying it, but. <laughs> All right. All right, Joey. Robert. Joey, wait, wait. Is it me? If I was Paul, watch your four shamblers. Do not vanguard them forward because there's no point in going forward against Jesse's list. Ideally, if Paul doesn't move out of his deployment zone. Like the first six inches of his deployment zone is his deployment, and he doesn't move out of it until turn four. Uh, turn three. <laughs> <laughs> Three or four, depending on how fast Jesse moved. <laughs> like, terrain so depending. There's the thing. Uh, yeah. Paul's got enough shooting to take out goblins if he wants to. He's just got to open up holes in Jesse's line, and then he can get in there. Um, boomers can't shoot after they've been hit. Paul's fast enough to get in. I, I, I think Jesse's list is, is going to beat a lot of lists out there. I don't think it's a very good matchup against elves. I, I, I think elves are one of the lists that did Jesse's list fit. So, um, I think an elf list like Mike, Serge, George's will give us fit, but Paul's is just not built for this. Just open up it's a pathway. It's not the right one. Dracons go 20. Ogres go 6 plus 12 breath. That's 18. Dracons are picking their matchups. Now, he does have the spitters. I don't know what terrain's like. I'm expecting some terrain, but, yes, I mean, any list that uses spitters – they just don't do much. Um, I'm not saying it's a it's a gimme game for Paul, but I think Paul, I think Paul wins. Sorry, Jesse. Okay. It's fine. And last but not least, Jesse, what do you think is going to happen? Um, well, because <clears throat> I'm not Jesse, specific, I'm going to pick toys? me. <laughs> but where's the toys? <laughs> you know, I don't get to do toys on my own. That's terrible. It has to be for something else. <laughs> Um, I, I assume dragon riders were going to be a thing. Um, also, I'm not discounting elf shooting. You know, yeah, boomers. Now they're five up deep, five up uh, defense from elf shooting. Um, from the sea guard, they'll be six up. Um, if he's shooting boomers, and he's not shooting goblins. If he's shooting goblins, he's not shooting boomers. Um, either way, I'm counting on stuff to die. And something nobody's mentioned. I I still have three boomer sergeants who. Essentially, I can put them anywhere I need them. That's 24 shots that are a lot easier to fit into without getting cover. You've got a lot and of they all, I think that's like, true. on pillage. You can leave them behind to claim your back pillage. Like, right. You know, I've, got 30, I've got 34 unit strength in that list. Yeah, that's, in that's in my defense, fun. Jesse, I was getting to that part with the Bruma Sergeants, and then like Enya started coming over in my head, and I just <laughs> completely just teared up and wasn't able to read the rest of the list. So. 30, I mean, it's a lot of unit strength. It may be too much for Paul to beat on pillage. I mean, the unit strength isn't as <laughs> Now. I'm not discounting, Paul. I'm not discounting elves at all. It's not like I'm going to roll in here, um, show them a big old junk, and be like, I win. But um, I am uh, – I've kind of planned for this. And if he's killing my stuff, it's not like I'm not killing him back. I can lose more than he can and be okay. So I'm going to say me just because I just, uh, can't wait. I'm just going to point and click, and I don't want to think. I, I'm going to make a prediction that you get Paul's best sports vote. <laughs> I think you will. I think, I think you'll get it. I don't I'm know about that. I'm predicting a best sports for, for Jesse this weekend. He's yeah, winning it. At no, Robert, at TNT, we had a list like this, right? It was all ogre shooters and ogre spitters. It was shooters. It only went it's like four and three, two. Four and two. Like, I think there's going to be two games where Jesse's just going to lose this on scenario. I think the boomers are better than the shooter list. The boomer lists are a lot better than the shooter list. Shooters can't move. Jesse yeah, can't but move I, don't, I don't think he's going to get invaded. I'm going to predict that Pizza Jesus takes his punishment on Jesse. For this <laughs> <play>. <laughs> nah, Pizza Jesus uh, does me. I just offer him. Jesse's going to auto win pillage. He's going to auto win dominate if that comes up. What was the tally, Mike? What was the tally on that one? Uh, we got three for Jesse and two for Paul. Mm, Pretty close. All right. all right, we'll see how it goes. Pretty close. All right, let's go on to uh, table number 11. On table number 11, we have Ken Stubbs uh, versus watch that Ray Wyatt. <laughs> right. watch that, that ogre taste out. Uh, so this is going to be Ken Stubbs versus Ray Wyatt. Uh, so Ken is bringing... Goblins with Abyssal Allies. Uh, so his Goblin list, he has three regiments of Ravel. Uh, one has the Quicksilver Rapier, one has Rapier, sorry. One has the Staying Stone. Uh, I should be, it's two, it's, it's two regiments and a Horde. And the Horde has the uh, Hammer of uh, Measured Force. 
Uh, he's got some spitters. He's got two regiments of spitters and a horde of spitters. Uh, the horde has blessing of the gods. Uh, he's got a regiment of trolls with dwarven ale. Uh, he's got three war trombones. He's got a flagot with the banner of the griffin. He's got a bigot with, with the uh, crystal pendant of, of uh, retribution. These items are weird, man. Uh, and he's got a whiz. Uh, with Bane Chant and uh, Veil of Shadows and the Inspiring Talisman. Uh, then he's also got a Mincer and a Giant, a Goblin Mega Blaster, and Grogger's Great Lobber. And he has the Sneaky Stabbers formation. Uh, and then for his Abyssal allies, he has a Horde of Larvae, he has a Horde of Tortured Souls, and he has one Ifrit. Oh, uh, that's, that's like a great yeah, 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 he's gone. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, Ray, uh, Ray's of course playing Undead, uh, as he always does. Uh, he has a horde of revenants. He has two wraith troops. He has a legion of zombies. He's got a regiment of zombie trolls. Because somebody at Mountaineer has to have a regiment of zombie trolls. Uh, he's got a horde That's of werewolves with the Brew of Strength. Uh, he's got two Balefire Catapults. You don't see those every day. Uh, he has a Lich King with Heal and Shroud of the Saint. And a Necromancer with Bane Chant and Inspiring Talisman. Uh, and Lycanus. Uh, and then he's got some Empire of Dust allies. He has a horde of Skeleton Spearmen. Um, which is an interesting choice. A Bone Giant and a Cursed High Priest. I'm not sure why he's got the Empire of Dust Skeleton Spearman. I guess just to do the unlocks. I don't know if they're cheaper than the regular Undead ones. I guess he must just want must have just he's wanted to build the Empire of Dust, I think. And I think it's just a model thing, so he's doing more WYSIWYG than not. Okay. Okay. Just sort of in, in transition. Then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, then. Ray, what do you think? Well, I I played Ray for the first time at Vanguard, except in my challenge of uh, the two rays enter, one ray leads, mm. uh, which was very kind of him and considerate. He's he, he is a really good player. He went to uh, Masters. He knows what he's doing. And at that game uh, tournament, he brought a eight drop undead list at two thousand points. So I will never underestimate Ray because in my first game against him, he gave me a really hard time, which I didn't appreciate. I think he's in the transition to Empire of Dust, uh, which is why he has that uh, addition of allies that otherwise make no sense. But he has a lot of, uh, of good points and, and solid capabilities with that list as he stands. Uh, Ken's Goblins, um, look a, a little bit more more disjointed than what Kyle's did with Kyle's with a bit more mincers and uh, giants with a bit more focused on the aggressiveness whereas Ken's looks split between the fitters the war trombones uh, the wizards versus the rabble, uh, the flaggets bigots and uh, mincers and giants so uh, I'm I'm going to give it to Ray based upon what I see from the list as experience. Ray, having played him, knows what he's doing with his list going in. I I, I have a bit, I have a lot more respect for him having played him, and, and pulled off a win based upon my list being superior against the list he brought. Uh, Ken's list looks good, but. Um, it doesn't have the focus that that I, I would like to see. Okay, Jesse. <laughs> Quicksilver Raver. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> laughing at that. <laughs> I managed to get all the way through that list without breaking down laughing. I thought so Quicksilver Rapier was hero only. Wait, was I Is wrong it? on that? <laughs> well, Chris approved these lists, so if it's wrong, it's Chris's fault. I don't know. Yeah, I thought that was hero only, but it could be mistaken. Hey, if that regiment wants to be a Quicksilver Raper, it's his business. <laughs> you don't judge. <laughs> I'm not stopping it. It's more the biggest. If it charges an individual, I deserve. 
for whatever that Personally, person Personally, I would put me. the raper on the flagget because that word makes me laugh too. Yeah, but, the quicksilver rapier is just this unit has plus one to hit when attacking individuals in melee, so no. Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm more confused about, about why Ken is bothering putting items on regiments of Goblin Rabble to begin with. That seems like a really questionable use of 15 points. Um, but I don't know Ken Stubbs if I do. Like, I'm sorry, I don't remember you. My bad, bro. Um, but his list looks like it, it's kind of like a new guy list where he's like he's had some success, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna use it this time." Ray, Ray is methodical. Ray knows what he's doing. Ray is scary. Um, maybe he can make zombie trolls work where Jake couldn't, but that's not saying much. <laughs> you know, Alex makes it work. It doesn't. Cause your Jake. Option. Ray can. Alex can. Jake can. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Ray on this one. Just. Just because uh, I've seen him, I've never. Once again, it's one of those. He's always on the top table. I'm, I'm sitting around the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna go with Ray on this one. Ray's good. Ray's know what he's doing. And but I'm hoping the Raper Regiment gets to hit something just so a dude like that. It hits on that, fours. That's what it will be now forever. Fours. Unless it's something gets individual. Raper. Okay. Raper. It's um, uh, Felix. What do you think, Felix? Uh, man, that's this is a tough one because I don't know either gentleman, so it's literally just going off of lists I like. Um, I like terrible X Men, the Quicksilver Raper. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to talk about that. Um, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go with Ken because I like I love the the bigot with Crystal Fenton and Retribution just because the lulls. So, yeah, that's I think that's a fun one to throw up and be like, oh, I want to chaff this guy up. Oh, sweet, I'm gonna destroy him. Oh, wait, I can't. Advance into anything because he's done blow me up. So, sure, I'll go with Ken. Uh, Joey, what do you think? All right. Um, I get the feeling Ken either has an abyssal army and he's building a goblin one, or he's just taking models he already owned and converting it to Kings of War because that's what it feels like. That uh, was it. Flag it. Yeah, flag it or big it with uh, the crystal pendant. But he just drops the two items off of the rabble regiments, and he can now mount it. Now it's speed eight with the crystal pendant. Now it can actually do its job right. Like at the moment, it's not mounted, so it's only speed five. It's gonna have a much tougher time getting in the way of stuff. Like right. you're gonna have to back up on a counter charge rather than counter charge in order to get him in the way of something. So it's a lot more finicky to use that. Ray is. I've never played him actually, but uh, he's one of the. He's always consistently top, uh, and he was at one point sportsmanage. So I got to give my vote to him. Like, unlike Sean, he gets a club vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robert, what do you think? I've been going back and forth on these. I think they're they're both pretty solid list. Uh, I, I look down at that. What I really like on this scenario is is that unit of larvae down there uh, with ensnare. It's pillage that you don't need that larvae unit to go anywhere. You can just put two pillar two tokens in between some terrain and just move that up there and they'll stay a long time. Um, I, I think that is, as well as some of the shooting he has, I, I like Ken's chances in this. So I think if there's going to be seven tokens over six, the larva taking one isn't going to be as big of a deal, but if this is a six or five, it's going to be much more important. But if there's seven tokens and that larva only gets one of them, then that's a much smaller problem for Ray. It's hard to say. Uh, you going with Ken on this one, Rob? Yeah, I'm going Ken for sure. Okay. Uh, I so so I do know that um, so Ken Ken was at uh, Vanguard GT. Uh, I think he used to play Warhammer Fantasy, and maybe he's just going to be the Kings of War. So if you guys are, are kind of sensing that like maybe he's new-ish to this game and is just kind of pulling out old mod models. Uh, that might be what's going on. He, Did he, he didn't play George Abyssals. Uh, no, he didn't play George. No. Uh, he, he, uh, he didn't have an Abyssal army, so I think maybe this is like he, he's converted some stuff over, so I think that might be what okay. the Abyssal allies are for. Um, and uh, actually, the first time I ever played uh, Ray, Ray had the Crystal Pendant of Retribution on uh, some mounted character and, and tried to trick me with it. So 
uh, Ray is well aware of, of that trick and he's not going to fall for it because uh, he's done it himself. So uh, there's, the there's all the background I know on it. That Crystal Pen of Retribution on a 20 millimeter base with a Surge army against it, like, you can just ignore it. You can sidestep two inches and just Surge. That is you don't have to charge it. I think we're missing the main point, which is it's a ray. <laughs> you know, this is this is a very different kind of undead list for, for Ray though, because he's got the Balefire catapults, which you don't see very often. He doesn't have uh, he doesn't have any flying characters, I don't think so any flying characters. He doesn't have uh, the heavy cab that you usually see in the undead list. Like uh, there's he, he's actually lacking some of the a really hard punch that you normally see. He was running Dust at Kings of Donors, and he won that. But I really like this Bone Giant plus Surge combo. Like Even only having the one, that thing can contribute an awful lot over the course of the game. Yeah, it's going to have to, because that's that's the biggest punch he's got. I don't know that he's looking at a lot of high defense Crushing across the table. Brutal, but, uh, surge it into a flank, that thing can pick up some stuff. Yeah, it yeah, definitely will. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you guys are probably right. So this one, this one was... Uh, uh, three to two for for Ray. Uh, so moving on to table number twelve. Uh, table twelve, we have Richard Knott versus Ben Bowers. Right. So uh, Richard Knott is playing uh, Forces of Basilia. He has three regiments of Calvin Footguard. Uh, he has two hordes of Elohi. Uh, he has two regiments of Paladin Knights, a troop of Sisterhood Panther Lancers. He has Nia Seleucus and Ur Elohi with the Brew of Haste, and uh, two War Wizards. Both of them are mounted, and both of them have Martyr's Prayer. Uh, and he has the Holy Lancers formation, which uh, gives his knights elites. I think. Holy Lancers. Holy so is Lancers. It nice Elite 2 or is it just the Knights? I think it's just them. Mm -hmm. I think okay. it's just the Knights. It's all of them. Is it all of them? So it gets Nice Elite 2. That makes him an awful lot better. Uh, each unit of Paladin Knights in this formation is granted the Elite Special Rule. Okay. Okay. So this is just the Knights. I think the, I think the Brotherhood formation is similar. Uh, that gives Pathfinder to everybody. In it. That gives Pathfinder to everybody, and the Exemplar gets Bane Chance. So, like, yeah, the, the character that you have to tack on to the Brotherhood one gets something, but the character you have to tack on to the Basilean one doesn't get anything. Uh, but he's already pretty good to be. If Nias gets uh, the lead, that turns him into a superstar. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, if you guys don't know Richard, he's, he's pretty new to this game. Uh, he's a local guy in my area that I've been teaching how to play. Uh, and he was, he got the uh, wooden spoon at uh, at Vanguard, so uh, he's still he pretty new. Brother, but, uh, brotherhood at Vanguard, right? He had, he had Brotherhood at Vanguard, and now he's switched over to uh, Basilea a little bit. Uh, he's he's improving, uh, but he's still kind of kind of green. But I think this is probably the most solid list he's come up with uh, so far. So there you go. A little bit of background on him because you guys probably don't know. Uh, then over to Ben Bowers. Uh, Bowers. Ben is Bowers. Bowers. Thank you. This is why you have uh, people that know folks on the cast, so they can correct you so you don't sound but so stupid. Uh, so Ben is bringing... Uh, uh, <laughs> Joey's going to be giggling and saying that to me all weekend. Uh, and so is Jesse, and so is Ray, and so is everybody else. So anyway, moving along. Uh, <laughs> Mostly me, though. Mostly. Uh, Ratkin, he's got some warriors. He's got two regiments of warriors uh, and one horde of warriors. He's got, ugh, he's got three hordes of shock troops, uh, one with a potion of caterpillar and one with brew of sharpness. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Uh, he's got a horde of brutes. Uh, he's got two regiments of vermintide. Uh, he has an enforcer uh, mounted on flea bag. He's got two warlocks. Uh, one of them has heal and the shroud of the saint, and the other one has bane chant and the inspiring talisman. He's got two Swarm Criers. One of them's got the loot. Uh, he has a Demon Spawn that flies. And he has the Lab Rats formation, which I think just gives a bunch of his stuff. Uh, uh, just gives all his the Warriors regen. are Regen 5 up. So the two yeah. Regiments and the Horde. And the Horde are all regenerating. Uh, all right. So there we go. Uh, Ray, what do you think? No, Ray should not be first on that. 
<laughs> but I'm just gonna put down the actual say on that. One. I'm just gonna go ahead and put down that Ray thinks the rats are gonna win. Um, <laughs> and check Roger. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's, that, that's fine. Uh, time out. I've gone first on everything else. I'm gonna go first here. <laughs> uh, is that the reasoning? Like. Yes, that's the reasoning. Yeah. I just want to hear him it's say something. To this. It's infallible Canadian logic. Don't question. <laughs> I've gone first on everyone else, but here's the reason why. Ben did pretty good at TNT with his list. He's running my list with a few modifications for Vanguard. Sorry, for Mountaineer. It's the best list ever. I mean, I I agree. second at TNT and second at Mountaineer, like, eh, it's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal, just fourth at Vanguard, <laughs> second at TNT. But I, I think ben, ha ben has all the tools that he needs. Ben has the, the chap to go into Richard's space. I, I, I wanted Richard to do well. I, I really wanted to play him this past weekend, but I got sick. Um, there are ways to go around this list, um, but it's ugly and it takes a lot of uh, exchanging your low high for chaff or, or paladin knights for chaff. And I'm not sure if Richard's going to do that um, because Ben Ben has the tools at 2200. This is pretty close to what I consider to be the optimal list for Rakin at 2200. What I consider to be the optimal list. Um, I consider myself to be reasonably good with Ratkin. I think Ben's going to do well. I'm calling him for another top four at Mountaineer. Sorry, now Todd, Don, and Ben for top four at Mountaineer. All right, um, Jesse. I'm just Mr. Number One in the Mid Atlantic, rated over the Master. I'm okay with Ratkin. I mean, Ray talked about his list, but I fought him and tied, so it can't be that good. <laughs> <laughs> He's never beaten me, and I'm only fourth. Like, come on. I'm saying, you know. <laughs> um, looking at it, and especially with knowing that that Richard's new, even though he's Mike's Padawan, uh, I got to give it to the rats on this. Just, I know from personal experience, shock troops are yikes. And with the Warlock to heal, it, it's pretty much going to be throw everything at your stuff that's scary, at Richard's stuff that's scary. Once that's taken down, Shock Troops is going to beat everything to death like they owe the money. And then you still have the Demon Spawn being annoying. So, gross. I might have to give the Ben on this one, but Richard, Richard going to learn. He's going to learn today. He's going to learn yeah, Shock Troops have all the rules. Yeah, Richard, Richard doesn't have a lot of experience playing against a list like this. This is going to be pretty brutal for him. Uh, Felix? Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to go with the uh, the Ratkin on this one. It's going to be, uh, like I said, if he's not as experienced in having to deal with the Ratkin, Shock Troops are definitely, they're, they're, they're good instructors. They, they will, they'll definitely teach you a lesson in pain. They're going to shock Richard, that's for sure. <laughs> in which case, I don't want to watch that table. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doing the bait and wanting the, the extra hole. Really, it's going to be more like this. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> All right. Joey, what do you think? So, almost nobody actually knows this from this cast. I don't think anybody met me when I was playing Ratkin. Like, Alex and Mike Austin remember that part of me, but almost everybody here knew me from the Salamander days. Um, Free Ferrari. Not, yeah, with them shirts you wear, and you could not know you. Exactly. Uh, this list isn't like Ben's list isn't hard to beat with Richard's list on pillage. Like it's going to depend on how Ben deploys. I was able to take Robert Brandon's Brotherhood list, which had a grand total of fifteen and seventeen as your highest nerve, and beat a list like this on pillage. It it's just going. <laughs> <laughs> that was a special list, though. It it was. It had three and snares. That was a big key. But 
the biggest part for Richard is if he's going to be able to concentrate those two Aloha into a Shock Troop board, they'll kill it in one go. And if you can kill one Shock Troop board in a spot where the other ones aren't going to be able to spawn, he can start sweeping. So if Ben plays it right, he wins automatically. If Ben doesn't deploy with most of his brain cells, then Richard has a really strong shot. I'm going to give it on Richard, but I'm going to, or I'm going to give it by Ben. I'm going to say Richard has a chance with those two Aloha if he can combine them into shock troops and not take a repercussion for doing it. I get, to say, this, I get to say this a lot, but I think it's already been said. Ben's going to win this one. All right. I think that is our first, uh, first unanimous prediction. Ah, he went, Joe, oh, no, actually, no, no, the second one. Yeah, you guys thought I was going to beat Brad. You, you, you all thought I was going to beat Brad. Hello, I'm the Rat Kid. How's it going? I have a giant robot for some reason. I am the I am the defender of the faith, Baz Lance. <laughs> <laughs> That's roughly how it's going to go. Ken, it's, rat, you Ken, la la la, suck it, Rat Kid, and we have you vicious. The Basilian hits him first and does nothing. <laughs> yeah, I like Richard, and uh, uh, I'm glad that he's. He's getting into this hobby and he's and he's learning and he's and he's bringing a friend of his that also plays games uh, in as well. So like it's it's good to see growth in the hobby. But like this is not a matchup that that uh, you want to see with a with this Basilian list. And this isn't a matchup that 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 I want to see. Like I don't want to play this Ratkin list with my list either. Like this thing will destroy me. Um, so yeah, I think I think We're you're showing up Sunday if we knew the matchups. Yeah, they give some and tips, but... sure, Mike. Mike. I know this was also a list that was submitted after Team T because Ben saw my list of Team T and that may have influenced him. So I apologize to you, Richard. That's, that's fine. Come on. No, I think, look, I, I think your, your prediction of, He's a good player. Of, of this list being uh, top four is probably pretty close. I think I could probably go along with that, that Ben's, Ben might end up top four at this turn because that is. To be tough list. Also, uh, so okay. uh, Sean's about to kick me in the nuts the second time because Ben Bowers is the guy who beat Sean at Siege for Sean not picking up a pillage token after standing on it for three straight turns. <laughs> so I'm about to get kicked in the nuts twice. Sweet. So we know what our Friday night entertainment is then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. That would be an enjoyable ride. In between rounds of uh, Home Steve, we'll have a ball kicking going on on the side. So, uh, table 13, moving on to table 13, uh, we have Chris Snyder versus Rufus Hambright. Rufus. Uh, Rufus. Uh, so, Chris is playing Night Stalkers. And he has. Rufus, my man. Chris has got two troops of Reapers. One has Fire Oil and uh, one has Blade of Slashing. Uh, and then he has a Regiment of Reapers with the Brew of Haste. Uh, he has a Regiment of Butchers with the Mace of Crushing. He has two Hordes of Fiends. One has Wine of the Elven Kind and one has Brew of Strength. He's got two Mind Screeches. He has a Shadow Hulk, a Portal of Despair, a Horror with Bane Chant 2. And a shade with the pipes of terror. So, I want to say uh, Chris's list only comes up to twenty-one fifty. So, I think there's fifty points on Funny Bones. We'll yeah, he, 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 confirmed, but he, that was probably where the other fifty is. Yeah, that that might be. Uh, Chris uh, Chris Fisher did say that a few people had Funny Bones, and if they're this were fifty points short, they probably also have Funny Bones. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Rufus is this. Rufus is playing ogres. Another ogre list. Uh, kind of a different ogre, ogre list from the other ones. So this one's interesting. Uh, so he's got a legion of warriors with the blessing of the gods. He has three regiments of berserker braves. Uh, he has two uh, chariot regiments. He has a warlord mounted on a chariot with the banner of the griffin. Uh, he has an army standard. He has two uh, warlocks. Uh, they both have drain life and aura of heroism, and one of them has the fireheart amulet. Uh, he's got a red goblin bigot on a flea bag with the quicksilver rapier. Uh, he has a giant. He has two regiments of red goblin rabble 
and he has the Hell on Wheels formation, which I hope has something to do with all his chariots. Yeah, it plus does. One nerve, plus one nerve to the chariots, plus one to the warlord. The warlord also gets rallying one. Correct. Nice. Cool. Uh, okay. So that is the list. So, uh, Ray, what do you think? So, when I was looking at these lists, I didn't know either of the people. I, I, I didn't think either of the lists were completely optimized. Ray, you've I, met Chris. You just don't remember him. But you met him. Did I? Yeah, he was at a uh, process. And Keystone. He, 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 he ran Keystone. Chris. There's just so many people he's forgotten the list of victims. He just... Ray's too much of a popular Canadian. Uh... When he gets over five people he knows, it's all downhill from there. Sorry, Joey. <laughs> but with Rufus's list, I, I did like the fact that he used the formation. So I, I think that, combined with Arb heroism, is really good. I think the Warlocks, combined with the uh, Berserker Braves, will add a lot to the Drain Life, which I had the pleasure of uh, facing against uh, George this past weekend. So I, I think there's a lot of advantages to Ruf Rufus's list uh, going forward with lots of high nerve and unexpected high nerve uh, going in. Uh, with Chris's list, list it's it's a um, Night Stalkers, which I had not experienced until I placed, uh, placed Joey for the first time. Um, so going into this, this is one of the ones which I didn't have a, uh, a prediction in advance. But I think I'm going to go with Rufus. Uh, I think the Warlocks with the Berserker Brave and the Firing will provide them with the, the necessary punch to break through Chris's list. Okay, Jesse. Um, I played against Rufus and I talked to Chris. I met him. I know he's been playing his Night Stalkers for a while. Rufus is one of them. One of them older fellas, which he's awesome. He bought me a root beer, so I'll die for him. Um, but he, he's got army itis. Like he, he's played a bunch of armies. I know because he has a bunch. Uh, What's wrong with that? I'm not saying it's yeah. a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just like the mind screeches. Something ogres don't want to see. But Rufus also isn't an idiot. I mean, he's got Berserker Braves, and that looking at that between those and the goblins, like Berserker Braves. They're either doing something or they're dead. And Red Goblin, this is going to be tough. Uh, just because I, I love you, Rufus. I'm going to go with Rufus on this one. I think Chris will probably pull it out, but I am the Oracle for a reason, and I'm feeling Mr. Hambright's got it. Plus, anyone who now runs the Quicksilver Raper is my favorite person. <laughs> Because that is now my favorite item in the game. <laughs> well, I have to figure out how to work it into every list I ever made from now on. Then. All right, Felix. I I have nothing really to say after after that analysis. Um, gosh. Um. Uh, you can tell where my ability to analyze these lists and when work got busy. Um, I'm probably gonna say just go with Rufus, even though with Chris being Night Stalkers. Uh, I'm so unfamiliar with Night Stalkers. If you go up against me, Chris, you could probably just make up half the rules for half your units. I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Got it. And, oh, 30 attacks, hitting on threes? That's cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, just that Hell on Wheels formation, that can do work if, uh, if he's able to maneuver his chariots into position. And with the Aura of Heroism and the rallying and all the buff, yeah, those, those chariots stick around for a lot longer than you would think. So we so go with Rufus because Rufus. It's an awesome name, so go for that. All right, Joey. All right. Um, I'm going to go over Chris because, hey, he's playing nice soccer's and I got to vote for him at some point. Um, but I really think Rufus is really kind of like taking two of those Berserker regiments out and just taking Torture Soul allies because they're five points cheaper. You get the same nerve and you get fly out of it. Like, you lose a little bit of combat potential, but you're not really caring about that on your chaff. So I think Rufus could benefit from some tweaks to his list, but uh, I think Chris has some tools here that'll really help him out. The Mind Screech 
If you can clear out enough chaff to get a couple shots of that Legion, it'll prep the Legion up for a really good charge. The problem I have with Chris's list, honestly, is I hate Troops of Reapers. I think they're absolute ass. I, I get the appeal, but 1114 oh, Nerve is like the worst thing in the world to spend 150 points on. Okay, Robert. Yeah, it, let me have Rufus too. I think. Um, oh, baby. The are really the only thing that really threatens the chariots. And like you said, that those chariots are going to be hard to move for a Night Stalker army. Um, there's, there's, stealth isn't doing anything for the Night Stalker player in this game. I think Rufus will be all right here. I have to turn one of those mind scratches and pick up a chariot for it, then. Chris is going to be doing pretty decent, but it, it's going to depend on that turn one shot. Yeah, it's going to be telling you. This isn't a great matchup for, for Night Stalkers. Um, yeah. This is a pretty Not interesting ogre list. This Night nice Stalker list. Dude. I think there's uh, other I'm ones that could have done better. All right, so uh, that is uh, one for Chris and four for Rufus on that one. Uh, so Please. moving on to table 14, uh, we have George O'Connell versus Ben Mitchell. Uh, so George is playing elves, as he usually does. What? Um, I know. Shocker. Well, um, I'm so out, sorry, right? Ben. I'm sorry. Uh, so in George's elf list, he has the uh, the standard uh, two hordes of kindred archers. One has heart seeking chant, uh, and the other has fire oil because I guess he just had five extra points. Um. He's got two hordes of Dracon Riders uh, with Potion of the Caterpillar on one and Brew of Sharpness on the other. Uh, he's got a horde of War Chariots with Wine of Elven Kind. He's got three Dragon Breaths. He has an Army Standard Bear mounted on a horse with the Diadem because everything got to shoot. Uh, he's got two Elven Mages. Uh, both have Fireball. One has Bane Chant and the Black Iron Crown. And the other has a Shroud of the Saint. And he's got two Noble War Chariots. One has a Staying Stone, and the other has the Inspiring Talisman, which everyone always thinks they're inspiring anyway, so it's probably good that he did that. Uh, and then Ben Mitchell is playing Ogres. Man, there's a lot of Ogres at this tournament. Uh, so he has two uh, regiments of Red Goblins. He has two hordes of warriors, one with the Brew of Strength uh, and the other with Dwarven Ale. He's got two regiments of Berserker Braves. Uh, he's got two chariot regiments and one chariot horde with the Potion of the Caterpillar. Uh, he has a warlord on a chariot with Banner of the Griffin. Uh, he has two warlocks. Uh, they both have Drain Life. One of them has the Loot, and the other has the Inspiring Talisman. Uh, he has two Red Goblin Blasters, and he also has the Hell on Wheels formation. So this is going to be like a demolition derby with all these chariots on the table. Uh, all right. What do you guys think? Ray. So I, I played Joe, George's list at TNT. Um, he's modified it a bit since then to reduce the number of kindred archers from three to two. He's added the war chariots in exchange for a horde of archers. Um, looking at this, Ben, you have the options. You, ha you have the ability with the chariots and the uh, formation to weather the storm. It's whether or not you can get in to do the damage that you need to do is really the question at the end of the day. Uh, during my earlier look at this, I think I picked George, and I, I'm going to stick with that. But I think it's going to be a lot closer than what we think. Um, as Joy was saying, I think it's going to probably be 14-7 or 13-8. All right. Jesse. Uh, this is the reason why I ran the ogre list I did, just because the... <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I mean, Jesse, just build a whole Night Stalker army in a month. You'll beat George. Trust me. If it worked for me. It'll work for you. Nah, I, if this list doesn't work out, I've got a defense six. Just walk it slow, spam wall going. Um, 
I just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe because I'm old and jaded, but. And who knows? Ben's probably a better player than me. Especially he's got three things of chariots. Yeah, it's going to come down to. It's going to come down to terrain. That's what it's going to come down to because. I mean, George, as much as I give him crap, he's not an idiot. Um, if he was, he wouldn't be nearly as fun to pick on. Um, so. I'm going to have to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because Ben, Ben can shoot just as well, well, maybe not as well as George, but he can shoot back. So, uh, let's just for record's sake, plus I know it'll tweak George. Love you, George. I'm going to pick Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and, now, and now I'm going to get a manifest, manifesto of why I bet the game, and George will give me reasons why he'll win. But now, Jeff, now it's just to the point. You I have lose to your pick. oracle for Mountaineer because of this pick. It's on record. Like Just letting you know, we filmed it. I would like to uh, point out that that when I tallied the results from Vanguard, um, I actually got more than everybody else. Uh, but I'm not giving myself the award because I'm the TO. And the reason I got one more than everybody else is because I'm the only person that picked George. Um, so with that, we're moving on to uh, Felix. <laughs> well, in that there case, uh, with all my uh, all my expert analysis, I'm picking George. Then uh, <laughs> if only to help give me some edge up on the standings with uh, with Jesse. Um, Screw you, Felix. Screw you. <laughs> it's called playing the game. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I haven't gone up against George before. Uh, you know, like I said, it's it's going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, he's no dummy when it comes to have a, how to use his uh, elf army. Yeah, I think if he's able to get some lucky spikes and rolls, it's just going to really just neuter Ben's army, and he'll be able to, to be able to take it. So. George. And I didn't count Ben's, but George is only rocking about 14 unit strength. It's got more than that. Does yeah. he? Remember, if, if they have elite or they fly, they lo- or not elite shit, they have Nimble or fly, they lose the unit. Right. Right. I think he's got 15. Um, yeah. 15. All right. Joey, what do you think? I count a 14 unit strength, but uh, I'm still going to give it to George. Just. I really just 14. think that uh, we're just going to see two chariots die turn one. Yeah. Two chariot regiments die turn one, and then probably the horde turn two. While the warriors try to work their way up. And by the time the warriors get there, all three dragon breath are probably still going to be alive. And they're just going to pick one up. Like it, this is not the ogre, be- ogre build that I'd want to see to play George. Um... Really, I just wouldn't want to play George with ogres ever. Like that's not oh, the matchup I ever want. <laughs> right. But, uh, Unless you bring five hordes goblin shooters. <laughs> yeah, if you roll more dice than George, eventually you'll win. Right. But or count on until you're doing that, you're probably a little step behind. Uh, unless George reads something on the list like he did against me at Vanguard. Vanguard. Uh, I just I don't see this going another way. All right, Robert, what do you think? I think in general, I think the shooting elves are a really bad matchup for ogres. Um, if Ben Ben's a good player now, Ben Ben has been playing war games a long time, and he, he knows his his uh, his strategy, so I, he, he'll work something out. If Ben does have a chance, it's because of the unit strength difference on pillage. I mean, George really doesn't want to come forward much with with anything except the back home hordes, but. I just think there's too much shooting and too much speed for George. So he's got the upper hand on this one. George doesn't have to come up till turn five. Like the Drake House don't have to hit the halfway point until turn five. Those are where the tokens are. Yeah, but he only needs three. I assume yeah, he's got two flying boards. Where he can only skill two. Uh, yeah, it's four. He's got two flying boards. You don't bother playing the scenario until turn five, right? Like then you just fly and get whatever you need at the last turn. But, but Mike. What's the advantage of the formation that Ben's running? Is it like plus one unit strength? Or plus no. nerve. Hell on wheels. It's uh, plus it's one nerve to chariot nerve. regiment. Yeah, plus one nerve to chariot regiment. Plus one nerve to the warlord if he's in a chariot. And um, and then the warlord also gets rally one. So, so for me, because I've been drinking a little bit, continuing the <laughs> aristocratic tradition, <laughs> uh, the chariot regiments are currently running at fourteen sixteen, but with the 
uh, Panner of the Griffin, which is War, Warlord's running, he's current, the Chariot Regiments are running at 15, 17. 16, so, 18. If 16, 18. 16, 18. With a rally, yeah. If, if Ben's super aggressive, I think it's going to be a bloodbath, which is why I say I think George is going to win because George has switched to a more aggressive, combat-oriented list. But I don't think it's going to be any uh, tip of the hat for either one because I think Ben can move forward, say, charge me if you want, and then you're going to die. I I really think that if I don't drop my bottle cap opener... Uh, that would have been benefited by just taking two Torture Soul regiments instead of those Berserk Braves. Like, Torture Souls are just better than the Braves for what you want them to be doing. Except for the plus, plus one. one. Except for giving the battery for the Warlocks. Yeah, so, but right. you're already over oh. here in three. And you have but, two. But you go Drain Life eight, or you go huh. uh, Lightning five. And there's also uh, like what four or five other rounds of this tournament, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm just other matches the schools be give you like at least eight different options over the course of each game versus the Berserker Braves who are either strapped to the warlocks or they can't be where they want to be. Unless the like, torture souls are eliminated or the Berserker Braves. If he gets into combat with those warlocks plus the bump to their dice. He's not going anywhere. He's just going to keep damaging you and heal you, keep damaging you and heal you. If you ever need a tutorial on Drain Life, we'll ship you over to Midwest. You play Eric Trowbridge, and you crash <laughs> the rest of it. At Siege, I played the whole Drain Life yeah. 30 game, where, you know, if you roll 25 hits against the Prime Horde, you tend to take it off on that turn. <laughs> well, then we're back to if you roll gooder, like I believe <laughs> exactly. you said earlier. Well, so you just have to hit I 18 just, times. I really think the first would have been better here than those Berserkers all right, let's do. let's uh, let's go on to the next round. So that one was uh, four votes for uh, George and uh, one vote for Ben. You know what, Ben? Uh, so wait, 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 I'm gonna laugh each each one of your faces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on table fifteen, uh, we have our own Ray Shields versus Austin Kerrigan. Side note: I'm sorry, I don't hear any more shit about having so boatmen? I'm running there, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Ray is playing a historical list with some fantasy elements here. He's playing English. Uh, so uh, he has heavy warriors. He has two regiments of heavy warriors uh, with two-handed weapons. He has two regiments of heavy cavalry, uh, one of which has ambushers and the other which has claymores. Or are those just annotations for... Which no, that's those, those, those are just Pathfinder. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, I, sh I should have read up on my historicals before doing this. Uh, he has a troop of levy. He's got uh, two generals mounted on horses. Uh, he's got two musicians, one of which is on a horse. He's got two regiments of longbowmen and two hordes of longbowmen. Uh, he's got two heroes on Winged Beasts and two wizards. Both have Bane Chant and one is mounted on a Flying Pegasus. And then Austin's Night Stalker list. Uh, he's got two troops of phantoms. Uh, he's got a regiment of needle fangs. He's got three hordes of butchers. Uh, he's got a Shadow Hulk. He's got two planar apparitions. Uh, he's got two Void Lurkers, one with Brew of Haste and one with the Onyx Ring. Uh, and he has a Dread Fiend and the Butcher's Block Formation. So I think since this is Ray's match, I'll have Ray go last this time. Oh, Good. Canadian logic. He's gone first every other time. <laughs> Regardless of what we say. I will go first. <laughs> <laughs> it's Canadian logic. No, Ray, you do not get to go first. Jesse gets just, to go first. I'm just going to put you down as voting for yourself, and we'll come back to you at the end. So, Jesse, what do you think? <laughs> right, your explanation. All right. So, back to what I said. I don't hear any more shit about how many bowmen I'm running, Ray. Um, You're running five boards. 
Totally, <laughs> we don't have ensnare and piercing. They still hit on fives. You know what? I don't need to deal with your Virginia logic either. That's why we broke away and made better Virginia. You know, in my county, <laughs> my county, five hordes goblins is perfectly acceptable. <laughs> you recall, I play against a gentleman who runs like nine hordes of Alohi. That is true. Uh, yikes. Austin knows what he's doing with his list, and it's beautifully painted, so you've already lost in that regard. Um, Austin's good at what he does. He doesn't give a shit about your bowmen. Doesn't matter if you run a ten of them. Gross. He's got that big purple fucker. Yeah, I might have to go up. I might have to go with Austin on this one. Just, I mean, this is a matchup he wants to see. He's faster. Um, plus, Ray, Ray, you're going to be drunk as a skunk by the first <laughs> round. Anyway, he's already at top sure. of the middle, and you don't care. So, yeah, I'm going to give this one to Austin. All right, Felix, what do you think? Uh, I had heard the dirty rumor that on uh, Ray's list, he had listed the uh, heavy warriors and heavy cavalry as Americans as a subtitle. I think that's what he had said. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's I mean, it's it is a lot of Bowen, but like uh, like Jesse said, his uh, night stalkers aren't going to give two shits about all of that. Um, I will give you a piece of friendly advice, Ray. Do not look at the non-metal metallics. I'll just leave it at that. You'll just next thing you know, your pants will be gone and in a bathtub with your kidneys missing, wondering what the hell just happened. So um so yeah, I'm gonna go with Austin on that one just to just to tick off the uh, tick off Ray. So All right. Joey, what do you think? You're on mute. Sorry, roommate just came in. Uh Ray's never beat me and Austin is one hundred percent against me. So that's pretty quick <laughs> analysis there. Uh Ray is, should have brought his rack in if he was gonna play Austin round one. This is not what he wants to see. Uh the only thing I have to say to Austin is just avoid the archer. Ma the meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? He's, he's gone. Um, I will say, you know, if you look, oh, he's back. <laughs> All right. We need to call police and turn his hands up. Well, just... Mom! Um, we'll move on to Robert. Uh, oh, God. I'm, don't... Down, I I'm talking with my friends about army stuff. I think, he, I think he was leaning towards Austin. I'm just going to put down Austin. For him yeah, and then go on. Not like he was going to Austin. The planner yeah. apparitions. Austin's got two of them, so early game he can heal all the little damage those little the bowmen put on. What what damage they're able to put on stuff, he'll heal them back off. Late game they're holding stuff up with ensnare. This is kind of a list that Austin wants to see. So um, if Austin can't beat this one. He he probably can't beat any of the rest of them. And he's a good player, so I think Austin's going to take this. Damn, Robert's harsh on the Southeast players. If he can't beat this, <laughs> like, Jesus, what are you, uh, y'all running Cobra Kai down there? <laughs> you strike hard, you strike fast, or you go home. You can't beat this list, just pack your shit up. <laughs> Damn. Wow. All right, Ray. Uh, now you get to go, so Ray. Right. Right. So far, everybody's <laughs> picked, your, picked your opponent. What do you think is going to happen here? Okay. I'm going to ask for the mercy of the crowd, because at the start of this, I was totally going to vote for Austin. <laughs> <laughs> because when I looked at this this morning, that's all I thought was, holy shit, I'm in trouble. I have a, a lot of points invested in longbows. He has the heel to deal with my shooting. He has the stealthy. This is the worst mashup I could ever hope for as the English. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just see that fly by? <laughs> yes. Then I heard four people talk about how I was going to lose. And the only thing I could think of was, man, I wish I brought my rat can. But after that went through my head, I was like, I'm going to win. If only because I want to prove that my humans are better than the master's humans. So Alex got his kingdom of men, but I 
I just, so I, I love the fact Mid, Mid Atlantic uh, podcast or Mid Atlantic Army list reviews. We always have at least one drunk guy. <laughs> He's gonna fall over in a second and be done. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Mike. Is this Mike muted? Like, no, nah, he's good. That's why I brought my gin and tonic down here to the table. Right, I'm back. I'm back. Sorry, guys. Okay. That's okay. Like that. You strangle that dog. <laughs> uh, that was my roommate. Oh, it's my roommate's <laughs> dog. So, <laughs> I, right. I thought oh. I'll win, but I'll win. You we heard people yelling meatloaf. It was, it was bad there, Joe. We were worried. <laughs> He's playing the Somehow, sorry. England will prevail, but I kind of doubt England will prevail. Sorry, I can't. I cannot officially vote against a fellow aristocrat, but that's not the matchup you want to see. So, uh, moving on, just two tables well, left. Austin just doesn't win. Left. Austin doesn't get to come home. So, shit. nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll take it. They said English couldn't win in the Mid Atlantic meta. They were wrong. We're happy to take people from other regions. There's there's all kinds of people moving to the Mid Atlantic these days, man. We're picking up people left and right. So you know, if he can't go back to the southeast, we'll find a place for him somewhere around here. Hey, all you got to do is have a set of license plates. Apparently, you're good for the Mid Atlantic. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so on table sixteen, uh, we have Thomas Strother versus Ira Knight. So we got here. Uh, so Thomas is playing his Abyssal Dwarves, as he normally does. Uh, his list is, he's got two troops of Gargoyles. He has a regiment of Half-Breeds with the Brew of Haste. He has one, two, three, four hordes of Abyssal Grotesques. Uh, one has a Healing Brew, one has Caterpillar, and one has Brew of Sharpness. Uh, he's got one, two, three, Abyssal Half-Breed Champions, one with Banner of the Griffin, one with Blade of Slashing, and one with the Healing Charm. And he has Basuzu. Susan. 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 And then uh, Ira is playing Undead. He's got two Wraith Troops. He's got a troop of mummies and a regiment of mummies with the Caterpillar. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six regiments of zombies. He's got a Revenant King on a horse with Drain Life and Banner of the Griffin. And then he has two, three Revenant Kings on Undead Worms, all with uh, flying. Yep. Uh, then he's got a Lich King uh, with Bane Chant, Mount on a Horse, and Funny Bones. It's interesting. All right. Uh, Ray, what do you think? You're first again, Ray. I think the English are going to win. <laughs> Gentlemen, the English or the Canadians will always come up on top. But losers uh, die in English. Besides the fact that we all speak a common language of English, uh, I heard that Ira Knight is a person who's transferred over from the Warhammer fantasy group over into Kings of War. So I'd like to welcome them into this community. Um, that being said, Thomas is one of the people who I played in my first term tournament. And I've only played him once, but he has fought George uh, and fought previous people on occasion, so he's not somebody to be underestimated either. What I like about Ira's list, when I looked at it earlier today, when I was much more sober, was mm. his three reverent kings on Undead war Worm. Um, I think the three of them combined as a battery with 27 attacks, hitting on fours, is 27 attacks, probably about 14, 15 hits, and 12 wounds, 13 wounds, and those are enough to really take care of whatever they want to hit. All the rest of his army is really there to absorb the hits of whatever Thomas hit has. Thomas, on the other hand, has at least four striking powers, uh, which can go through Ira's list. So I think this is going to be one of the ones where the attrition is close, and I think Thomas is going to have it, 
but I think Ira has a, a close capability due to his undead worm. Okay, uh, Jesse. Um, I'm just I'm looking. Well, first of all, Robert, did you build a Thomas's list? I feel, this seems familiar. I, I I've played it before. I don't know who built it <laughs> first, but I've played that list. Um, I've played. Uh, my buddy Payne runs this triple Revenant King on Undead Worm list. Not this one necessarily, but I know what they can do because if if you're hitting stuff in the front with these, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. He's going to chaff up. His zombies are chaff. Possibly the wraiths are chaff. Or probably probably the zombies are mummies. And he's just going to get flanks all day with Revenant Kings and wraiths. And the grotesque are good, but not good enough to take flank charges. Yeah. And the half breed champions, once again, if they hit something, it's going to hurt. But 12-14... You know, Susan's going to have to do her job of trying to jump around and shut stuff off. Now, granted, Thomas does have the tools to deal with this because he has those half breed champions are individual, crushing three, six attacks hitting on three. So they're going to hit with four, probably wound with three. He's going to be able to make stuff sit down. But from what I like to I, I know Iris kind of newish. He dabbled a bit in Kings of War, then went back and then comes back to Kings of War. He's not stupid. And just judging by this list tells me he's not stupid. It's it's going to be close, but I think Ira will take it. Just just for simple, just unit strength with pillage. And Ira can afford to lose a lot more than Thomas can. Yeah. Just, right, put, me down same, just put me down for the same thing. Okay. Jesse had it right. Felix, what do you think? Okay. Um... Yeah, like uh, the good points uh, Jesse was saying about the Abyssal Half-Breed Champions, they can definitely kind of turn off any flying or casting they want, if any. Do they have any casters for Ira's List? Do you need There's a Lich King. Yeah, I Lich King. Lich so, I mean, he can turn that off, and he can turn off the flying, but, you know, meh. Um, I'm sure this is not the list he's wanting those guys for. They're for the, the heavy elf shooting. Um, I will say, though, I really do like Ira's List. I would say he's almost at... Ohio trash meta level. Uh, if he drops two of those Revenant Kings, he could get five more zombie regiments. So <laughs> that would then put him up on Ohio trash meta level. But uh, that being said, I think he, he can afford to lose a lot more than the, uh, especially on pillage. Because zombie regiments, they do nothing but win you games like pillage. Because you can either ignore the Revenant Kings and all that stuff and let them, you know, at your peril. Or you ignore the zombies and they're just like, all right, I'm shambling. Six inches here, or five inches here, five inches here. Next thing at the end of the game, they've claimed all the objective and there's nothing you can do about it. So I'm going with Ira on this one. All right. Joey, what do you think? Let me go with Thomas here. Um, really, it's. I don't like funny buns in this list at all. And as. The zombies eventually will get there, but if he just kills enough on the first few turns, then the zombies aren't going to get there at all because there's not enough left to get there. I think it's really just me. If, if Thomas can ignore those revenant worms for a couple turns just to deal with the unit strength stuff, Thomas can probably have us in the bag. But half free okay. chance can lock down each of those worms. So right. if he just locks them down for a turn and just cleans up zombies, and then on the next turn cleans up worms. It's not a whole lot that Thomas has to do after that. All right, so we got another split decision. We got uh, three for Ira and two for Thomas. And that brings us to the last table uh, where we have Zachary DeFore and Joe Neat. Uh, so Zachary is playing Abyssal Dwarves. He has uh, two regiments of Immortal Guard. He has Three hordes of Lesser Obsidian Golems. Uh, one has Blessings of the Gods, and one has Banner of the Griffin. Uh, he's got a Dragonfire team. He has three Heavy Mortars. He has two Iron Casters. They both have Surge and Drain Life, and one of them has Mind Fog. Uh, he's got Bracky Barka and Basuzu, and Basuzu's Upgraded Gargoyles. And then Joe Neat is playing Forces of the Abyss. 
Uh, and he has a regiment of fleshlings with the banner of the griffin. He has a regiment of succubi with the hammer of measured force. Uh, he's got two hordes of Molochs, one with a caterpillar and one with a dragon shard shield. Uh, he's got three regiments of tortured souls uh, and a freet with the boots of levitation. Uh, then he has the well of souls, uh, an archfiend with wings and lightning bolt and the uh, blessing of the gods, uh, and a Cronius. That's a really bad pick for that archfiend. That's a total waste of 20 points there. The blade of slashing will do the same job for five points, man. What are you doing? <laughs> you put that 20 points somewhere else. Sorry. That'll leave uh, on right. lightning bolt five. It's going to come in. Yeah, One of yeah, right. the five games, it'll show up. Not to mention if he gets flanks or rears with attacks. Yeah, so. yeah but play the uh, slash is everybody. Yeah, I think it's a waste of 20 points there. Anyway, uh, points so, efficient, but yes. <laughs> uh, so, Ray. So, I looked at these two lists earlier today, and I didn't know which one I was going to go with. Uh, Zachary. You have a really nice list. Um, you have the triple heavy mortars, which requires the five plus rolls to make sure that your indirect fire attacks actually hit. Whereas Joe is much more aggressive in his list. Uh, with the tortured souls, he can move up and then move up and be in combat which means that your heavy mortars for Zachary are only really given at least one turn before they'll be within the indirect range which they can fire at. So having looked at these two lists, lists and considered them earlier today, I gave it to Joe Neat. Um, I think his list is a bit more aggressive, which will get under the range of Zachary, which disenfranchises him and sets him up for a, a bit worse result at the end of the day. Okay, Joe? Yep. Uh, Jesse? Um, do, do, do. I've watched Joe play. I've talked to Joe a lot. Um, Joe is a surgeon when it comes to his list. So, like, with his, with his Arch Fiend, he's not going to hit something in the front. He's going to hit something in the side. Um, but... As much as I hate to say it like this, like if, if Zach's mortars are on point, there's nowhere Joe can hide his arch fiend and well, so they're all height four. The rest of Joe's army, he can literally hide in front of the lesser obsidian golems, never have to worry about them because they're height three. But P.S. Zach, I don't know if you're watching, but I'm I noticed you named your stuff Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Please, God, let it be Pokemon themed. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I was thinking a strip happen. club, but okay. Let this happen. Well, this shows that I'm just a five-year-old man-child in a 35-year-old body. Um, that's the size of a V-Dub bus, but whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to say Joe on this, unless the mortars hit, and then it's going to be sad panda time. All right, Felix. T to be fair, anytime mortars are on point like that it's sad panda time for just about everybody but i'm definitely gonna go joe on this one um got to see him in action at adepticon with his abyssals um yeah he, like like jesse said he's a bit of a surgeon i mean he's 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 gonna pick the engagements he needs to be able to kind of dismantle this abyssal dwarf army but like i said if those war machines you know if he's rolling fives and sixes every turn it's just not gonna be much joe's gonna be able to do so but joe Go with him. All right. Joey. I'm going to go Zach on this one. Um, a, I'm voting on War Machines again because I, I think War Machines are best game one, and then they peter out after that. But uh, Zach's just got a couple extra pieces of chaff that I think is going to really help his lesser obsidians out on pillage. And, like, Immortal Guard are, like, they can hold those two back – Pillars tokens you always see. So wherever his opponent's zone are, his zones is are that those immortal guard can just sit there and just they can hold those two. And if it's turn five and you haven't put wounds on him yet, it's going to take two turns to get into that, and that's going to really help Zach out on this one. Yeah, I, I think Robert. that 
I think whether or not the mortars are on point or not, um, Joe's going to have to allocate resources to deal with them. You just can't let three of them shoot you, shoot at your turn. So he's got to go back there and do something with them. Um, and I think that will give. I mean, I, I just there's a couple more pieces there with in, in Zach's list. So for pillage, I'll go with Zach. Yeah, I think I would tend to agree with you guys. I think this particular abyssal, abyssal dwarf build against this particular abyssal build is not a great matchup for the abyssals. Um, yeah, I think he's he's gonna have trouble. Like he's he's gonna have to maneuver really well, but he's gonna have to do it fast, or those mortars are gonna start taking stuff off, and he's gonna be in trouble. Uh, so that is the one uh, turn. Like, what's that? It's turn one, and he hits, and it's yeah, it's turn one, and he hits, and, two, and he hits, like, and it might be over then yeah. too. Yeah, like you 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 can't be worried about getting flanks on the lesser obsidian golems when you're sending everything you have that flies back to get rid of the mortars because the Molochs aren't going to get there in time to get rid of mortars, right? You have to send all the fast stuff back to get rid of that stuff. So yeah, I think, I think I'm, I, I probably lean towards the missile force on this one too. Uh, so that is the end of the pairings. Uh, it is almost 11 o'clock. We have just a couple of minutes left. Uh, so I want to thank uh, my panelists for uh, taking the time uh, their evening to come review all these lists. I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, I'm going to throw out just a couple of, uh, of, of uh, predictions that I'm going to ask you guys to make real quick for fun. Uh, and then we're going to wrap up and uh, hope to see everybody this weekend at Mountaineer. I think it's going to be a really great tournament. We're going to have a great time. Uh, so let me go through real quick. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys uh, three questions. I'm going to tell you the questions in advance, and then I'm going to ask them one at a time. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys, what was your favorite list of the ones we reviewed? I'm going to ask you, who do you think is going to win overall? Uh, or I guess best general, um, and who do you think is going to end up with the counter charger award? So, uh, and we're going to do these fast. So, Ray, favorite list? Which one stuck out in your mind? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. All right, Jesse, favorite list? My interpret. Okay. Ray, Ray W. Right. Your favorite list is Ray W. Okay. Cool. Uh, fuck Ray W is what I have written down. Perfect. Felix. Oh lordy. Um. Shit. Uh. Fuck it. Shit. Perfect. I had it. Oh. Just keep moving on. I'll pass. I'll find it later. Right. Keep moving. <laughs> fuck, Joey. Fuck. <laughs> Joey. Favorite list. Hey. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm gonna go with a uh, style pool. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Robert, favorite list? I'm going to cheat and go too. I really like Tim Smith's Vanguard list, and I liked Iron Knight yeah. Zombie Revenant uh, Worm, Undead Worm list. Um, yeah, I, I like the Ogre list. Um, so, <laughs> one exactly, of the five. Exactly. Felix, uh, do you have a favorite list you come back to? Or I'm going to go with Tim Smith's just because uh, yeah. the list intrigues me. It's got stuff I'd like to try myself. So. Mm. Uh, shout think, out to Zettelmeyer. Ten drops at twenty two hundred is pretty risky, but I like what he's doing. All right, um, Ray. Prediction for best general. Sean Moore. Sean Moore. Jesse. Me. <laughs> Felix. I'm going to say Kyle Poole because I don't know how he gets any attrition, but he does manage to do it. So. He'll, he uses sorcerer's ways, so. All right, uh, Joey. Uh, best general. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Mike Austin on this one. I think he's got a strong list for doing it. Good call. Yeah. Good solid prediction. Uh, Robert, what do you think? I'm gonna go with Jesse. Yeah, baby. All right. Uh, and then uh, last, uh, counter charger. Who do you think is gonna finish directly in the middle? Right. Alex. Jesse? Damn, I can't pick Jake. John Moore. <laughs> always counter charger. That's, that's like always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Right? Always the counter charger. Never the, uh, so Felix, counter charger. I will say going to be somebody from Ohio because that's just how we roll. We get counter charger. Pick Felix. <laughs> but I already got counter charger. Um, let's see. Uh, Steve Malone would probably need one. Uh, Andrew got one at BCB with you, so I guess Steve Malone. I guess it's. I guess it's his turn. I wish he does better than that, but you know, All right. can't get you know top ten counter charger. Right. Joey, uh, it's gonna be me. 
I'm taking a new list that I've played a whole two games with. So I've won counter chart, or I've been 50% in battle with every list I've ever taken that's new. So history says it's going to be me. All right, Robert, counter charger. Prediction. I'll, I'll go Joey. He, he seems to want it, so I'll give him another vote. To moral support. <laughs> I should have had it in fucking TNT. Yeah, you're on. You're ripped off. <laughs> All right. So that, that wraps it up for the evening. It is 11.01, so I'd like to thank everybody for sticking with it for the whole three hours. I'd like to thank the panelists also, once again. Mid-Atlantis winning the golden sweater. Just saying it now. Mm. Well, obviously. I'm not to, yeah, I, didn't get a, I didn't get a Midwest Challenger because I just go to their events and play them. <laughs> You guys yes, everybody travel you safely. Do what I do this weekend, and uh, we will see everybody sorry, in March. Sorry, sorry, Mike. Hmm? Does the uh, Southwest have four people on their team? Uh, yes, we do. Yes, the Southeast. Tim, the Southeast has four people. Yeah. yeah. Tim Smith, myself, Austin, and Ben Bowers. Wait, Robert, aren't you at Mid Atlantic now? <laughs> my <laughs> license, my driver's license, still says Tennessee for another month. So <laughs> I'll play for one more month. Okay. My I also have a Tennessee license plate, so there you go. Okay, there well. We go. Oh, he's got the license plate, so yeah, there you go. So. All right, everybody, travel safely, and we'll see you on Friday evening at Mountaineer in uh, Martinsburg. Take care, folks. Cheers. Cheers. Take it easy. Robert, I, I was going to volunteer myself as Southeast. Right, and we also have Ray. Karaoke on Thursday. Karaoke on Thursday. And probably Friday and probably Saturday. Well, to do uh, it. Things are going. It is. Yep. All right. Good night, everybody.